and welcome back to Roll For It, the RPG show uh, where some of your favorite YouTubers and streamers get together and play some uh, geeky board games. Tonight we're playing uh, Dark Heresy, second edition. Um, Warhammer 40k Universe is a grim, dark place, and all that stands between the unteeming hordes of Xenos, Chaos, Demons, and Heretics is uh, a few members of the Inquisition, which includes our crew. Hello, how are we doing today? Crew is Heresy. Good. That's all he's been been saying over and over again. I don't know, again, is he seeing heresy or heresy. is he promoting heresy? That is the question. Everyone well, is a heretic. I do have a billboard Always. on my front lawn that says uh, Heresy Cthulhu 2016. We'll see if they win, though. <laughs> <laughs> I've thrown my lot in with Vermin Supreme. I'm hoping it turns out well. <laughs> if he turns out better than Crunchwrap Supreme, I'm down. <laughs> Oh dear, oh dear. Um, right, well, before we get into today's show, uh, we have to do our normal shilling that we do at the beginning of every show. So, um, Splat, do you want to take it away? Yeah, unless you want to do it. I mean, I was just happy. I was close. I have my task manager open right now, and I'm minimizing my memory usage. I'll uh, take it, though. Yeah, sure. And I'm looking it. at the Reddit, at the fan right. art of Carolinas I'll... with a mechadong. I thought that was me with a mechadong. I wasn't sure who it was. <laughs> No, I think it's, uh, yeah, I think it's is shouting Carolinas. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, I was I was saying what I was reading while I was looking at it. I mean, on the plus side, we've got some very not... talented fans, I must say. Uh, I am, by <laughs> the way, making it like fans. a little folder full of fan art so that we can like eventually put it up during like the breaks and stuff. And I think that's going to be fantastic. Just having the fan art on screen, especially the Mechadong, is going to be just. Awesome for the people who create it to get to see their art on screen. But it's I'm, I'm be not awesome sure about the Mechadong. Who, like, do you really want the Mechadong? I've never screen? been to the subreddit before. Encourage them. Go to the subreddit. Communicate. Chat. I just post this, your like, own like, art. Do it. Oh, it's fun. This is, I I'm not sure I approve yeah. of this. You said it. It's too late now. You can't take it back. It's too late. <laughs> it's out there. This uh, is happening. But Patreon. <laughs> So yes. Patreon, uh, if you go to patreon.com slash roll for it, we've got all kinds of tiers set up. We used to take donations that allow you to like influence the game and stuff like that. But now we've taken a more even handed approach of giving you guys like rewards and fun stuff like bonus bods. Uh, there's MP3s. There's behind the scenes like PDFs of some of like the boss characters and things like that. You get to vote on the factions that we're going to be fighting against in the upcoming episodes. Last month, Ordo Xenos won. So coming up, we should be up against some Xenos. So if you wanted to take active interest in the campaign and maybe get some free swag along with it, check out the Patreon. Also going to Ordo Discord Zenos. channel as well. Ordo I'm not sure how many people are aware of the Discord channel. I think that's cool. true. Quite, quite a lot guys of people are in the Discord channel because uh, I don't know how many patrons we've got compared to how many are in the Discord, but every time I look through that list, it's ridiculously long. There's no, there's no Patreon. There's no Discord channel. You're just making that up. <laughs> Heresy. If we get to 10K, hey, the... we will get uh, Shan in the Discord. Yeah, that's the goal. I put it on there. I was like, I have, 10, I have, not, I have not committed to this. <laughs> this was I need a lawyer. This is written without my consent. No, that that's, that's fine. When we get to 10K, we'll say, actually, it's 12K. Uh, then we'll get Shen. <laughs> that that we signature looks get there. surprising, like Bentham's signature. Or at 10K, we can just buy a bat of Shen. Hey, we'll hey go no. to the Discord chat. <laughs> At that point, we'll be rich. we can buy anything. Of shens we can find for 10k. <laughs> just, just At 10k, we'll start our own genomics lab and clone Shen for one that likes Discord. <laughs> no, 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 no. Because the clone will, we'll will hate them. even worse. The no, 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 no. Just, we'll, we will. You, you have, have you finally beat them from from the time that they're very young, so that they're very obedient by the time they're an adult? You've, you've played fine. FCL, just... right? If you have a cloning bay, every time every time you push one of your dudes out of an airlock because their health is too low, they come back and they're twenty percent stupider than they were before you pushed them out the airlock. You you can't you can't keep doing that because the shens will just get dumber and dumber and dumber. So they might actually let you get away with heresy. <laughs> Oh, that's, that's the point. <laughs> but then we would also have him constantly getting in trouble with the authorities on planets where the death penalty <laughs> is applied to any offense. I mean, assaulting an officer of the law. Um, let's mix it up there. Uh, also, say, that, does, that does have a very strong deterrent to any sort of crime. Yeah, jaywalk. Yeah, death. they have zero percent reoffending. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's pretty laser. Uh, statistic. Come on, let's, let's be honest now. It's really good. Pretty good. Uh, but yeah, um... I, I chew gum all the time. So if, if I ever went to like Singapore or Hong Kong, I probably would get beaten, silly, or killed, whatever. 
Are you not allowed to chew gum there, or is it you're just not allowed to no, spit it out? No, you're not allowed. To, you're not allowed to chew gum in Singapore. You can't own it. Oh, wow. Like an offense. Huh? What if you? What if you're just chewing random food that isn't gum? How did they they'll test that? They probably beat you up and like open your mouth with a with a wrench and they'll plant some gum ah. in there. Like you know, you know how in the U.S. we, we just sprinkle some crack on people just to yeah. get them guilty. Sprinkle some crack on them. Sprinkle Johnson. some gum on there. There you go. You're done. <laughs> <laughs> Carry on with the intro. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so we've got stretch goals on our Patreon. Um, the current one that we're looking forward to doing, it, we've we've in theory exceeded, but we won't know until the end of the month when the payments actually go through. Uh, is starting a D and D playthrough, which we're looking forward to doing next month. Also, we're getting uh, that'll be by the way a second show every week, and Splat will be it's a GMing. big one. So yeah, it's a big that's, one. Oh, it's going to be, you guys have no idea. Basically, you guys are just going to scream rules at me. You're going to be like, rules violation! And I'll be like, yeah, nope, but... strength check, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's my GM job as the, uh, the fifth edition veteran. <laughs> GM Vault. Um, also, we have another stretch goal that we're, we're coming close to, which is uh, cosplay. So if you want to see, um, you know... Cassius, Garrett, Branda, and of course everyone's favorite for cosplay, uh, Carolinus, getting all those mechadendrites. Bloop, 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 bloop. You know what he's gonna have? He, he's gonna have uh, uh, dryer vents. You, you know those dryer vents, those little tubes you can get that can go mm. from the dryer to the wall? Just get those <laughs> on your back. You can, you can put little scary faces on the end. You know, it'd be fun. Or you, or you, can, you can put a ferret in each one. Yeah, just leave them like empty. That. Leave them empty. Like ferrets will go. <laughs> <laughs> I bet a ferret does like 1d5 just... damage. Yeah, then you could just use duct tape and hamster trails, and then they just be like the extra jumbo size, and then you could just keep the ferrets trapped like in a reservoir on your back attached <laughs> to those, and then they just like come out and stick Tra their heads out. <laughs> Trap my ferrets in a reservoir on yeah, my Yeah, in a, in a backpack <laughs> reservoir, a ferret reservoir. You need a ferret launcher. I want to. I want to see like a ferret catapult, no. but a hand sized version. More, more like no, no, no. You, you get like uh, those like those plastic tubes. You like get like crossbow? an air pump. You attach it to the back. You put the ferret in, and then you just like you mean a pressurized potato air. Cannon. Yeah, like potato. A cannon. potato cannon well, ferret. for a ferret. Poof. <laughs> 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 so an RPG. Yeah. An RPF. And, and this is why you don't own a ferret, EE. E. This this yeah. is why. Every now and then I worry about his cat, to be perfectly honest. He does not want to be in a ferret cat. Uh, yes, <laughs> if you... Off screen, there's a, a cat cannon in construction. Uh, if you want to support us in a different way, you can support us by subscribing on Twitch, which will get you uh, a load of random stuff like uh, Moobot will think you're maybe a good person and maybe won't go crazy when it sees too many exclamation marks or something. Uh, in addition, there will be emotes that we are waiting to try and find an emote artist for. It's surprisingly difficult to find emote artists these days because apparently they're all busy. Um, also, if you prefer to not do a like monthly support tier system, because I know some people prefer like supporting one off because people don't like recurring payments, uh, you can use cheering bits and stuff, and you can also use uh, tips if you want. We have a tip link down below. Um, have you set it up so that the uh, cheers show up on the stream? They have pretty Hooray! graphics. Yeah. Which button do I press to do that? <laughs> oh, do you have Streamlabs open? Uh... No. I, lo I love the way you turned around and you were like, oh yes, I wrote that on my wall to if, remind if go, me. If you go into Streamlabs, you can click on yeah. each of the settings you can do on the donation, you can do subscriber, you can do... Yeah, Streamlabs. You don't have it integrated? Oh, okay. But they, they have buttons you can click to, to test all the all the different yeah. things that happen in your channel. So you can see how OBS responds to it, so you can figure out where to put the graphics on the screen. You can resize them, whatever. So Streamlabs. This, this is e why I'm a shitty streamer. Is it's, it's just too much for me. With Twitch and OBS, what Garrett is with anything that's not from a primitive world. <laughs> dude, dude, you okay. do not know the ridiculous setup I have to go for my audio. Like, that's enough for me. I do not want to, like, fiddle with OBS more than I have to, and so on. Also, we just got a tip from Echo. $10. Thank you very much, Echo. Aww. Much, Echo. <laughs> also, for everyone joining in, what did I miss? Nothing. We haven't even started it yet. We've been uh, doing bullshitting. You missed the uh. bullshit. We've been yeah. doing the OBS tech support thing. We've been like, all right, so have you tried turning it on and turning it back off and then turning it on again? Let, let me just try, try that. that. Tried that. <laughs> <laughs> Beep. To be fair, we only had 10 minutes of bullshit, which is not terrible. Uh, so let's oh, dive. Yeah. Let's dive in. <laughs> Are we in? Are we that in? Looked, Holy shit. That looks like a long fall. 
Head injuries. Brandon, a boat, a boat. <laughs> Jarrett, Jarrett pulls out his LAS rifle, starts shooting random okay. things. The My headphone is wire is now stuck. I can't. There we <laughs> you go. can't get back out. <laughs> can, can, we, can we fire magic missiles at the darkness? At the darkness. Technically, the magic missile needs a target. The darkness, you just I said. guess you can. Listen. Yes. The darkness is the target. Okay. They believe um, in a thing called love. Just listen to the rhythm of their hearts. You can't. No. We can make it, it is now. It's a crime against the crown to say that. What? It has to be falsetto. Go okay. <laughs> the secret police are not gonna. Show I'm up saving that. The I'm saving that for things. for D and D when I play a bard, and that is how I will inspire people. Oh, oh. dude, your bard <laughs> is always in falsetto. That is it. You you win all the roles. <laughs> no, my bard changes voice because my bard's background is spent some time acting, so he's gonna change his voice all the time. But it's never a time when a bard should not be in falsetto. Damn it. What have I seen that disturbed? Anyway, uh, okay. Hive world, uh, right? Uh, uh, uh. Yeah, you were on vacation for a week? You had like a week off in a hive world after finishing your previous task. Um, you'd been tasked by uh, Interrogator Khan to go and hunt down a book that had somehow found its way out of the Inquisitorial archives. Um, you managed to do so. Uh, it was seemingly rooted through a couple of different libraries before we found it. Um, it looked like that a slanesh cult of some kind had uh, taken up root in a library. You managed to wipe them out pretty handily without actually too much damage whatsoever, despite the fact that their leader had a chain axe, um, which didn't phase you at all. My chain axe. Apparently so. Um, you then went down, you know, found I, some... I seem to recall our face getting shot in the buck talks. Yes. That's not the part that I talk to people with, though, so we're good. I don't know. We don't you do a lot of talking that. at your ass, so... Yeah, I was going to say... True. Yeah. To fair be fair, point, you, a fair you took point. one point Zing. of buttock damage, um, and then you and Caroline. One point of buttock damage. <laughs> Doesn't do much damage to the physical shell, but to the pride within. I mean, in the original oh. buttock. For, side, for side five note. turns, your buttock suffers one fatigue. <laughs> in After the original Inquisitor game, workouts. like the, the effectively Dark House is based on, which is like half RPG, half tabletop, there was groin as a hit location. And all the things in the oh. groin were like, they're like really crippling. Like you would have to take tests or just be like, you are stunned for like 10 rounds. You were just Explosion. no- Explosion. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was, it was pretty bad. It was like, do I shoot for head or groin? Because they're both pretty vital. Always groin. <laughs> Always groin. No, no, no. You go knee for groin. And then as the head comes down, elbow. Or, you know, uppercut if you've got the reach. Okay. Well, while this is going on, uh, I'm going to- Hester interrogator Khan, assuming he has not left the planet yet, and ask if anything's going on, because we're, we're coming up on the end of our week off here on what was this world called? Exynos uh, Pandora? Supercopia. Oh, Supercopia, yeah. Yeah. Uh, effectively, um, you've sort of got contact with him, he's on the same world, so you can quite easily vox him anytime, and your responses are like, can be pretty quick if he's busy or not. Um, and effectively, just sort of sends a lot of stuff like, I'm doing my own shit, um, enjoy your time off. I'll have a job for you soon. You get the feeling <laughs> that maybe he's keeping you out of the way for a few days after he sort of gives you the bluff a few times. However, Tell you, um, he's pulling some shit. I'm on to him. Yeah, we'll come to your bit in a second. Uh, Garrett, however, has mentioned that he would like to hang out with the uh, the two guys who came down with uh, Inquisitor Khan, who were in the background. Uh, he totally rolled for this, too. Is that the guy that burned yeah. my book? Yeah, uh, no... Khan burned your book, but and he nicked Khan's... one of the like weapons of an exterminator underneath for burning the book in the first place. Douchebag. Um, yeah, it was those two that. All I wanted to do was be literate. That's all that I wanted. <laughs> sure. Um, and yeah, I did actually get Garrett to roll a fellowship test. What did you roll? The fellowship test was target twenty-eight. I rolled four. Yeah, so effectively Garrett actually hung out and had a couple of drinks with the guys, um, turns out one of them was a lass as well, um, who actually came with Inquisitor Khan, uh, Interrogator Khan. They're both uh, ex-stormtroopers of the Imperial Guard, and uh, both of them have got hell guns, uh, along with underslung weapons, one of which is an exterminator. And, you know, you hung out mm. for a few drinks and so on, they thought you were kind of okay if a little bit backwards. Um, but yeah, it was a good drinking session. And then they went off to their own thing on a different part of the world. Meanwhile, Cassius wanted to do something. 
Yeah. Unfortunately, I don't know if I can actually get into Skype to do it where my little thing was. Like, because Doing we're... we're Skype. I know, but we're broadcasting right now, so I can't get to the thing where I was talking to EE, where I had the entire, like, speech, like, plotted out. You should out. be able to. I, ca I can't, because that means tabbing away from the video, but you, you should be can. able to. Yeah, but you can. Do you mean you want to see the text on the Skype chat? Well, on the, I have another chat with EE that I that the chat. Oh, is you in. should be able to. Like, there'll be like the chat thing, which you go to, open up the chat, and then there should be separate windows. All of my skypes are always separate windows. Let's see. I mean, oh you know, yeah, there's a little button down there yeah. that I never saw. Holy shit! See, my weakness is OBS. I hate this program. Yours is Skype. <laughs> <laughs> this program's the worst because I don't know things about it. All right. So am I doing my thing right now? Uh, yeah, so you send an astropathic communique to Inquisitor Ravan. Mm -hmm. Behind the back. Yep. Right around the back. I'd be like, no, fuck. This guy broke my book. Uh-uh. Nope, my quest for literacy can't be stopped. <laughs> Hi, dog. Get me Boris. I says, my lord. Why, why you no help me read, dog? <laughs> He's trying to keep us down. He's trying to keep us futile. It says, my lord. I know that your edict was that I should no longer contact you instead of moving through Interrogator Khan. However, recent events have transpired which can no longer go unreported. Your servant Khan, who has conducted himself admirably until this point, has begun sending us on deployments which he insists must be kept secret from the Inquisition. This is considered to be highly unorthodox by both myself and my fellow acolytes, and therefore I beg your indulgence as I make this report known. Um, on the date of whenever it was that we were on the planet, a week ago, the Interrogator instructed us to deploy to Cypercopia, and we were ordered to terminate our current investigation involving the smuggling of Xenos from Ichthian. Against our better judgment, we left our work behind and forged forward with the new task. It was to retrieve a tome called The Truth of Four, a borderline heretical text, which had disappeared from an inquisitorial library. Under no uncertain terms were we instructed to keep this a secret from both you and any other inquisitorial authority. Having recovered the book from a cell of heretics, we returned it to Khan, and I assume that the book is now currently in his possession. As an acolyte, I feel it is my duty to inform you of this break in tradition and protocol, whether for better or worse. If I am to be punished for this report, I accept your judgment. However, I remain married to my honor, and thus, as your acolyte, feel it is necessary that you are aware of the current events. I beg your indulgence and forgiveness, my lord, for this trespass, and hope this information catches your interest. Boom. Wow, I can imagine Cassius in his bunk room with a massive lexicon there. Like, hmm, how do I make this sound more? Hmm, formal. That's fine. Just, yeah. Are you kidding that, me? This is a are you kidding me? It's crap the, it's over the, a week. Are you kidding oh, me? It's the 40th God. century, okay? This or is it the 40th or 40,000th century? 40, whatever, 40, whatever. First millennium. So okay, it, it's way, way better. Okay, we've had copy and paste for a long ass time. You've you've used this before for emails, right? You've seen emails that come in that go hi, and then there's no name, and then a comma, and then they have this pasted text. Try out our game, you know, blah 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 blah. It's the exact same shit. He just cut out whoever it was and he put in Inquisitor Ravon. That's what all he's saying is Cassius has like a, a, a pro forma, like snitching message that he sends every time. Especially with all these, with all these fancy that. words like, all grouped together in the same paragraph, you know? tattling on his interrogator. That is, that is a man who is well equipped for this line of work. It's true. You've got a hand it's true. him. Well played. Uh, so, oh, um, you wait like two days um you can take time to get messages from the astro pass and then a message is relayed to you um it's gene printed and you you unlock the data site that it came on and uh it's text only but i'll read it out in uh ravan's voice cassius although i appreciate your message it does concern me <laughs> recent look events. At the, the uh. And although I did ask you to respect the chain of command we have going, it does behoove me to admit that perhaps I was a little bit over-eager in sticking to the rigid formalities of our hierarchical structure. And perhaps there is some benefit to occasionally going outside to, to get work done and to check that things are as they should be. In this regard, I very much thank you for bringing this to my attention, and I'm a little bit troubled to understand as I was led to believe that you were currently on uh, 
vacation, taking some time off before your next assignment. In future, while it would be best if you continue to work through the structure of the Inquisition as I have laid out, if anything else should come to your attention that might be of use, or if you worry about in Interrogator Khan's workload or any other issues with uh, the command structure, do send me a message via the Astropath with some discretion. If you hear anything more about this book, The Truth of Thor, let me know immediately. Sincerely, Inquisitor Arcadius Ravan. He used his first name. He's never done that before. Pretty soon you get his middle name. Mm. I know. And then when I'm um, angry, I've got something to shout at him. You also gain plus one influence. Yay! Inquisitor Ravan. More with Ravan. Told Effectively, me. like, there's like a little cap on each side of who you're going for. Siding with one does have downsides. Uh, siding with the other does have downsides. Being in the middle gives you opportunities. Um, but you've moved up with Ravan, so... Mr. Miyagi would not agree with that. <laughs> Mr. Miyagi would find that, that that line of thought very dangerous. Mr. Miyagi is a heretic, and we would switched. burn him. <laughs> uh, did anyone else want to do anything before uh, the week's up? Okay, Garrett spends his time cleaning windows. Um, no, it's Mr. Miyagi. Damn it. E.E. -E. How do you not get that reference? Oh, I get yeah, the he's reference. waxing off a window. I, I get the reference. <laughs> I just choose to miss... <sighs> okay. He, he, he's wax on, wax offing the Sky Beast. Uh, yeah, okay. right. he spends his time waxing the Sky Beast as penance for getting doped up inside it. I imagine I've had time... <laughs> And I, I'm going to uh, assume that the materials are trivially easy for us to acquire to repair the Sky Beast um, loading bay doors. Yeah. The off ramp. I thought if you've yeah. got you want to roll anything that. for fixing that? No. I mean, if it goes wrong, what would you do? You would try you again the again. next day. Like, you can't go particularly badly wrong with a single hydraulic you unplug beforehand. Like, okay. I'm, I'm going to assume you aren't stupid enough to accidentally like get your face trapped in the door or something. Oh, come on, no. now. No, Roll to true. wash your hands. Come on. To be, to be fair, to be fair, <laughs> unless it was lethal, he would just go, okay, I first aid. Oh, I'm better. My jaw is, like, attached again. Um, Carolus is pretty good at that. So there is basically no outcome other than death. And that death would be, like, how many, like, tens, you have, uh, hundreds you have to roll in a row. To, it would just be pointless. So, uh, yeah. Like, how, how much, how much, t like... I would like to know what Bra what Brando is up to at this time. I'm assuming that 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 um, Garrett has been off socializing with the upper echelons. Um, Cassius has been basically in his bunk with this. I mean, this Garrett also wanted to like help this out. rage letter. <laughs> what about Brando? Well, uh, briefly, um, Garrett also wanted to help out with um, any stuff that, like, Khan could throw him. So, effectively, he's being given the duty of occasionally looking after the library while lots of inquisitorial staff come in to check through every single thing in that entire very large library, which is going to take months, if not years, um, to make sure there's no, no heresy so that the stuff can be kept. Um, heresy. Uh, you've been spending your time looking at the uh, thing you got last session. Um... Splat, I think dirty... your cat wants out. He just jiggled the door handle. <laughs> Branda. Kitty, come here. <laughs> See, I, well, I guess like we, we've just received the Sky Beast still. Yeah, it's still. So very... I've probably spent some time like looking over that, learning about it, and making sure everything's working fine. Something that Branda's probably also doing in his downtime is we've got that list of ship names that could be harboring that gene stealer, don't we? Mm -hmm. He would probably spend all like w what spare time he had looking through the list, trying to narrow it down, and also trying to memorize the names for future uh, reference. Okay. Um, roll me a scrutiny check. Uh, it'll be an intelligence right. scrutiny check. Would it be possible? Well, that's not going to go well. 
if 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 someone like Brandon or anyone else in the party has something specific that they want to look for, you know, every time we come across a list of ships, for example, wouldn't it be possible to have your data slate just do that automatically? Like anytime a list of ships comes in, just compare it against these things. Yeah, that we're the issue for. is in the 40k universe, uh, there's no such thing as like central databases and so on, and a lot of the formats and stuff generally won't be very compatible. And so effectively, it comes down to like if you've got spare time, you can look into stuff, you can ask around the local port, you can you know use your influence and stuff to get hold of some recent like docking manifest, etc. Um, there's different manifests like people come in for trade, people who've come in had to be refueled, people have come in and had to go through the like the boarding so, of checking of. So like in orbit we're forty thousand years in the future but nothing has become more convenient it's no. still just as hassled as it is today yeah okay okay we're in an, an empire so. that's been stagnating for ten thousand years yeah but and, don't say that because it's heresy yeah and to be fair <laughs> the adeptus like terra have to um work over the tithes and the administration of billions of worlds it's like a nightmare for the irs like the irs times like to the power of 99 irs's it's it's complicated and uh yeah, they don't all talk to each other. So I'm assuming that we we all like basically found places to spend this week off because we're not living out of the sky beast. Um, so I assume there's some sort of tavern or, or, or structure. We've got apartments and things like that. Yeah. Um, whilst everyone else is doing their thing, I would would have liked to have discreetly got a second room somewhere. Fairly far away from Cassius, specifically. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how, how, do, how discreetly are you trying alley. to do this? You're going to find a hobo in the Barry. back alley. You're going to hook him up to your book. Okay. Very. Um, because of your influence level yeah. and all of Splat that, etc. What, what's muted? Splat is... He, he's is going off at me for that, saying that. And I was like, yeah, I'm not going to tell him that he's muted. Take that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, You're a because... hypocrite. That's what I said in a nutshell. <laughs> Hypocrisy. <laughs> Hypocrisy. Hypocra heresy. Hypocrisy. You just, you just mad that, that he he tore up your book. You just mad because I'm of your mad influence he level. He still has his book, and I don't. Okay. Exactly. Uh, you should be able to effectively get your own. Like you've got your own line of credit that's not attached to the Inquisition so much anymore, and you could have probably washed it through a few places first. Um, and using that, you managed to rent yourself out like a, a couple of rooms in a hotel complex across the other side of this hive. Um, okay. What are you using it for? Well, you see, I've got an evil book. This evil book kind of, I don't know, it screamed. I couldn't tell if that was a scream in the sort of the real or the scream in my head. But Cassius is a psyche. <laughs> so if I make it scream again, he definitely hear it. So I'd want to be somewhere far away before I do anything that might make it scream. Okay. Because I plan to do things that might make it scream. I just imagine you're going away from the Sky Beast, just all, all quietly humming to yourself, I've got a jar of dirt, I've got a jar of dirt, I've got a jar of dirt. <laughs> so in, in the week you have, what do you want to do with the book? Well, first and foremost, I want to see if it's actually alive. If, it, if it's still got any signs of like heat, any kind of, is it still bleeding? I Nick. haven't opened it yet, and I'm cautious about this, but yeah. I'm looking at it from a medical point of view, because it's, it's, a, it's a book made of skin, and it bled, and it was having blood pumped into it. It's Make very... a Medicaid, no, it would be, it would be a heretic test. Okay. Wait, if, um, if you roll But because heretic you've test, got medic, and you because take you've got heresy? an ray, I will give you another plus 20 on top of that. Okay. If you roll a heretic check, do you take heresy? 62 target 62. Ha! Damn, nice. It just means you know of it. It doesn't necessarily mean you, you are into it. Yeah. Um, it. Took the whole week. Yeah, so you look at it, you scan it, and you really like look down at the pump and etc. It's very hard to tell because it doesn't have stuff like internal organs, etc. And it wouldn't necessarily have a pulse because looking at the destroyed shards of the pump, uh, it was a continuous turbine rather than a, a pumping mechanism. Um, but you just about gather that it is dying because it no longer has a blood supply, but because of the nature of the cells and the fact it's been meant to be a very long-lived uh, item, it technically is still alive, but it is just skin and a very rudimentary amount of other stuff, like a, it's got a very small nervous system, etc. Um, a lot of that is 
dying, but it, there is still some essence of life in there. But it is quickly evaporating as time goes by without actually having blood supply, etc. Okay. You need a hobo. Mercy Would I hobo. Be able to get a, a message out to my uncle. Would this be possible? Because it's gonna have to. It's a difficult task that one. That is a very difficult task. Um, I would say that this would be something you would roll an influence test for because it would be a sheer test of okay. hitting up your contacts, subtly trying to do this at the same time. Because I bet you don't want that to be known. Um, yeah. At the same time as just trying to put the feelers out there and see if you can gather his location so you can get a message out. I would say that would be an influence test, but it'd be an influence test at like a minus twenty. Because I would I would consider your uncle rare. Yeah, mm, that is worrisome. I'll I'll give her a roll. I'll try it. If it goes wrong, however, you three twenty two. Yes. Wow. Oh, zero three. Okay. Uh, <laughs> what did you want to say to your uncle? Basically, I wanted to get. I, I wanted to seek his. You know, Caroline is at a crossroads in his life, and. <laughs> This something it's, it's puberty all over again. This knowledge, something deeply interesting, which may be going against certain orthodox paths. He's he's literally asking for advice. He's he's. He's, and he's going to word it fairly vaguely, but his uncle, and he spent quite a lot of time, his uncle would almost certainly get what he's not saying as much as what he is saying in terms of he's saying, I'm going to do something very bad if I look any further and oh. my window of opportunity is closing. Just read the book, you worth okay. be like me. Surprisingly quickly, um, you put out some feelers and you find out very quickly that he is helping in some regard with the uh, investigation on a planet you were on very recently. Um, actually helping the uh, Mechanicus security forces try and hunt down uh, a tech priest by the name of uh, Binus. Hmm. And while the, he's very much a, a free spirit these days, which is very strange for the Mechanicus, um, you do manage to get a message through that you think will be relayed to him. And a few days later, you get a message back, which quite simply says, if you're asking me, nephew, I think I, know, I think you already know what you want to do. Just remember, everything was frowned upon before someone invented it at one stage or another. Knowledge okay. is power. Use it well. That was basically a yes. <laughs> at this point, <laughs> Come I need heresy. to find someone who's not going to be missed when all their blood goes missing. Oh Humble my blood. God. Humble blood. Call I it. just read a book. He's draining human beings for blood. <laughs> and he was giving but, me all uh, that shit. But he, he <laughs> needs to do it because the words on the pages don't show until the book has blood. Yeah, okay. So you can you can quite easily go and find uh, someone. Like, what you plan to do, you plan to just, like, whack them over the head, kill them, steal their blood, knock them out, steal their blood, pay them, steal their blood. I mean, what are you what are you looking for here? You have an expense account. Don't let this drag too far down into the abyss. Uh, I'd be looking for a way that, that wouldn't necessarily raise any eyebrows, so probably just pay them, steal their blood sort of thing. I mean, but if you still want to raise eyebrows, you are a member of the Mechanicus who specializes in biological stuff. You could quite easily go to most That's hospitals on these facilities. Dog. Oh, yeah, sorry, you've lost your leg. I can fix it, though. Just come with me. No, no, you could literally walk in and go, I need a bag of your blood supply. I'm a member of the Mechanicus, oh, biological, blah, blah, yeah. uh, uh, How much for one of your children? <laughs> Hive world up. <laughs> or, or you could quite easily I'm go in and even if they went, blood. even if you went to like one of the more dodgy ones, they'd be like, right, if you work with us and help us for like a day, we will give you like blood because having a proper okay. like medical tech priest... Yeah. So you go to one of the more dodgy ones that won't be recorded, but you can do that. Yeah. Okay, you spend like... The questions aren't really asked. Yeah, you spend two days helping out, and quite frankly, everyone there is amazed at how good you are. Because you are a proper tech priest who specializes in this, not some back alley hack who's like an ex-vet. Um, and in exchange, they do give you uh, effectively like two liters of blood 
um, along with some uh, like food nutrients that's designed to be taken intravenously, um, yeah. some sort of spare, uh, effectively plasma, um, and then some sugar solution, and a couple of other things that you might think might be of use, um, stuff like uh, electrolytes and um, antibiotics and stuff, stuff that the book might need depending on whatever. Um, exactly. So is. Is, is there a chance the book needs some like uh, defibrillation to get it back alive, or what's wrong with that, it right now? It needs electrolytes. Heart. Does it need mouth to mouth? Avak, are you prepared for mouth to mouth? I'm gonna get this book. Look, I'm prepared for Little Shop of Horrors. Feed me Seymour. I'm not gonna give it mouth to mouth. <laughs> Feed me Seymour. I fucking love that. If movie. this book starts singing to me, I'm totally okay with that. If it needs me to give it mouth to mouth, that's a little bit more. Mm, Does I the don't book know. Have a mouse. He hasn't opened we it. It's heresy. We're going to find does. out. I'm going to open it up. And if it's got teeth and tries to eat my hand, yes. But my hand is metal, so I'm hoping that it won't. Well, like, no, this isn't flashy enough. He pours the blood and he just goes... Okay, <laughs> yeah, so you get, you get the blood. Just, like, comes um, right the pump isn't working, though. You said it was a fairly simple pump. It is a fairly simple pump, um, especially considering your background in the Mechanicus. So it is something that wouldn't be too hard for you to do. It is intricate by design, um, but it is something that isn't, you know, you know the, all the basics of it. Um, so if you want to make me a tech use test, and because of your background in Heretech and your background in general, uh, I will give you a plus 10. Okay. 94, 62. I'll fate it and I'll try again. Okay. There With some effort, you do manage to replace a couple of the parts that you broke. Um, luckily, you're not a particularly strong individual, so when smashing the pump, it didn't break it too much. Um, not a strong individual. Oh, wait, what's the strength? Your strength's 40. He's made of metal. My strength's 35. 35. Yeah, okay, so you're an averagely strong individual. But I'm weak. Yeah, you're not weak. Um, so, you know, you managed to break it a reasonable amount but enough that you could repair it in places um and because of your background you knew a lot of the stuff that was broken you could recognize what it was meant to do etc stuff that's more intricate like the turbine um you managed to replace and you get it to the point where you think it's going to work and you turn the pump on and then there's a i just sit back and I, I watch it for a long time i just kind of watch it eventually over the course of I about two minutes everything Blood starts to seep out of that hole in the front again, where it was stabbed um, initially. Okay. Um, Can I staple that and stop the bleeding? Yeah. You staple it, you spray some basically coagulating agent on it, and the cut stops bleeding. You've got enough blood to replace, you know, the damage that's been done. Um, and sort of some, some effectively healing promoting agents that, you know, promote the, the, the effectively the suturing. Um, and it looks like the book, over the next course of a couple of days, is starting to begin a healing process on that wound. Okay. Well, now that it actually seems to be recovering, sure, I will, I will tentatively consider reading it. Uh-oh. <laughs> are you considering reading it, or are you reading it? I'm reading yeah, I, it. Is this like I'm, a open, romantic, I'm opening the book. I'm reading the Is this the like index. a romantic occasion hmm, for Carolina? Do, do you have candles lit? Are you doing this in the bathtub with the book on the on the little thing next to you? No, I mean, what's, I'm what's doing it in a here? room where the windows and the doors have been, one way or another, made inaccessible. <laughs> the curtains are closed. The people on the front desk have been told, don't ask any questions. Don't come here unless okay. I ask you to. Okay, the but, soundtrack but you... from Ghost playing in the background while he's working pottery. <laughs> with the book. <laughs> Just slowly caressing the spine of the book until I think it's in the right mood. Then I open it up. <laughs> oh no, that got filthier than I thought. <laughs> you started kind of this train. Oh, you started that kind it. Of book, damn it. <laughs> it is now. It was by the it was kept by the Solanerji cultist. What kind of book were you expecting this to be? Okay, you it was being the book. innocent. It was saying it was like the Harry Potter like beast books. Oh my god! It was like, oh, oh my you god. just have just, to. I, I, before I forget, I have to say this. At, at the birthday party last night, there were like fifty bootleg Nintendo Entertainment System games, like games that should never have been on the Nintendo. Like there was a Harry Potter game. It was awful. There were a whole bunch of things that just didn't make any fucking sense for the Nintendo. I didn't know people made shit like that. Bootleg games for the Nintendo. Why? Mm -hmm. Modern yeah. games. They're made like today. For the yeah. Nintendo. Uh, I don't know why they do it 
something to do with uh, Game Boy, the, like the old Game Boy. It's a really, yeah. really active community for that. But anyway, I want to know what my possibly horny book has to say for itself. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so you open the book, gently using like one of the effectively like tiny little spur horns are at each corner to turn it across. Okay. And you notice that the first page has a mouth. Um, seemingly without, like, a proper jaw behind it or anything. It is just, you know, effectively one slice of flesh thick. However, lolling down from that mouth is a long, slightly grayish, but getting more pallor as time goes on, tongue. With a big cut scar down it where the blade that was stabbed the book last episode penetrated and managed to almost cut the tongue in half. Um, you try and move the pages beyond, but the pages are sticking together and they seemingly refuse to move and you can't actually get any further into the book. The only page it would currently show you being the page of the mouth and the tongue. I remember wakey wakey. I poke the tongue with my sharp fingers. Um, seemingly no response to your sharp fingers. Welcome to the Okay. Okay. Um, see, I knew I should have asked for, like, limbs that people didn't need in the hospital. Damn it. There, there is, like, writing around it, and you can recognize a lot of the symbols and symbolism in that writing does seem to remind you some regards of High Gothic. Okay, I tried to read it. Okay, uh, make me a High Gothic test, effectively. Any pluses or minuses? Uh, no. And this will be, you get an idea of what it's about because you don't have the actual language required. 45, 42. So close. Ooh. So mm, close. You, you theory recognize some of it, but it's just a bit too obscure for you to really get. It is a very, oh, a very bastardized version. Am I able to tr use a fate for that? Because you've already told me what the outcome was. I know the boys um, normally say no. Don't they? How many fate do you have left from last session, by the way? Um, I have got two. Yeah, okay. Because um, I was going to refresh people's fate, but that would be when the next mission starts, and this is technically the end of last mission. So, sure. Okay. 48, 48. No. Both of them are so close. So close. Like, it's on the tip of my tongue. It's infuriating me. I almost no, 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 feel it's, that it's I know what it is. It's the tip of its tongue. Yeah, the tip of the book. Exactly. <laughs> no, you know what it says? It's elvish. It says, uh, speak friend and enter. I mean, you just have to know these Man, things. No. Um, but seemingly the tongue sits there, you poke it, no real response. The, the tongue doesn't seem to do anything other than it does an old thing of flesh. You poke it, it dips, and then you pull it back and it Okay, reforms. I got my Medicaid make it end, right? You know, I've got two liters worth of blood. Okay. It draws a bit into one of the syringes and above it just drips. A as couple soon of drops as of that blood drop the tongue. hits the tongue, the tongue comes to life, snakes upwards and seemingly grabs the next drop out of midair and feeds it into the more behind. Yeah. The tongue moves around a little bit, just making sure they got everything, sort of seemingly just crawling over the page, I, looking I, for any more. I, I feel that, you know, that the funness of, of just talking and, and saying what's happening isn't really capturing the gravity of this on Caroline. It's not like he's just like, oh yeah, this is great. Like, I imagine Caroline's, uh, uh, this is why I'm saying he's considering opening the book and stuff like that, because like, he's deliberating over everything. Like, I can imagine at, at points, like, Right after he's done that and the tongue's responded, he doesn't do anything else. For like an hour, he just sits down and like sort of gravely holding his face thinking, oh, how deep does so this rabbit hole go? Yeah. yeah but, see, but see, next thing you're going to do is you're going to have a black, you have a chalkboard up there and you're going to have a little, little uh, grid drawn on it. Like one drop of blood, and, you know, wait two hours and see if the tongue responds. Two drops of blood, wait four hours. See if it's not, you're going to have, you're going to be starving this thing to death. You're going to see how it responds to various stimuli. You're going to open a window. How does it respond to light? You know, as soon as Who the, knows? the tongue stops looking for blood, though, the rest of the book seemingly swells slightly. And you notice that the pump is seemingly pumping blood uh, into new sections of flesh that previously weren't actually being uh, okay. filled. Is there... What was the title of this book again? Uh, it loosely translates because it's, again, it's a bastardized form of um, gothic, but it's, it's much easier to read on the front cover. Um, it translates to something like The Prince Who Dances, um, The Prince from the shadows um he who walks 
in your path or something like that. It's, it translates very loosely as something like that. Okay. Corruption points and how that, to gain them. A primer. I would have made sure that there were light, l lights in the room, <laughs> candles in every corner, no no places for shadow at the moment. Al Green on um, the window. Okay, you, you light up the entire room. You get your, like, yeah. uh, aluminum, like, make a danger out to go boop. Yeah. I'm going to try and turn the pages again now that it's starting to swell. And it seems like it's, it's getting healthier. Can I, can I do that at all? Or is it yes. still... As, as okay. you go to turn the... Is this, like, an hour later? Yeah, it'll be, an it'll hour be, later, it'll be time. Because Caroline's sort of been thinking the about The pages it. seem to have shrunk back again and... Okay. Well, given that it's fairly easy that Caroline's would draw a connection, he would give it a little bit of blood, wait for the and then again the same effect occurs. <laughs> okay. Tongue snakes then out, stops peel moving. Peel the pages and... back, and you turn the pages. Um, the rest of the book seemingly is written in the game the very bastardized high gothic. I need to make another high gothic roll. Okay. Well, one of these has got to work. Technically, this is another language you now could learn. 40, 40, 42. Yay! So with literally one degree of success, um, you manage to go through and you, you vaguely pick up some of the terms here and there and you start to recognize some of the, the ways that the language has been bastardized, some of the symbolism. Um, it seems to be some sort of effectively chaosified uh, bastardization of High Gothic, uh, a more formal language used uh, between cults, etc. Um, and you go through and you realize that it's talking about um, a particular person, um, someone who lived a long time ago. You can't get exact dates, um, certainly a few millennia, um, who was exalted among the gods, um, was elevated above his station to live forever in the immortal palace. Um, and then it talks about um, his fall from grace and his delight in something about uh, the torment of man. Um, then a couple of other things here and there that you just vaguely pick up as um, relating to demons. Um, however, a lot of the pages um, have blank spaces, um, spaces where it looks like there should be writing. The writing itself, which is not ink, it is uh, literally more obvious veins and capillaries that form these uh, words. Right. Seemingly cruel in an almost, uh, they aren't written on lines. They're sort of curving and arcing, written in small boxes that trail, um, like almost like a madman has written them. Um, but there are gaps. Sometimes the lines are spaced far apart, like there's seemingly just empty space to be given. And then other times it looks like they're written around the edge of like something you'd expect to be like an image in a textbook, but there is nothing there. Um, it's a book where you're picking up on some of it so far. With further deciphering, you might be able to pick up more over time as you study the language. Um, but for now, you have an idea about its basics. And this does take you a few days to be able to translate this much um, okay. after trying to just compare some of the bastardization to High Gothic. All right. You also need to roll like a to d10. Yeah, no, I knew that was coming. <laughs> I'd also like to make sure I've... Um, noted some of this down like what i've managed to translate sure. in a file in amongst many many other folders basically on my souped up data slate okay uh what's your willpower Five. bonus my willpower bonus is three okay uh you will take three points of corruption because it's a d10 plus one minus the willpower bonus um okay. As you study it more, there will be maybe some more corruption, but it will drop down very dramatically as you kind of max out your corruption from this one source. Um, but so far, you've got a general idea what the book is about. It looks like it's still holding some secrets back from you. Okay. But other than that, you, you make a very cautious attempt to translate it, take your time, make sure you never like leave it anywhere dark or whatever, always shine light on it, etc. And mm -hmm. uh, other than its want for, you know, a little bit of blood now and again to be able to actually reveal its secrets to you, you start to get a grip. This book is effectively a, a biography. Okay. All right. And there were no particular names that really jumped out in the biography, were they? Uh, not yet. There are the words you can't translate. To... Yeah. 
uh, you could probably dis dis see that some of the words maybe could be names from context, but they could be honorifics. Right. And you can't okay. tell because you can't translate them. Um, so given time and better roles, uh, you might be able to pick okay. up some names there. Um, most of the time it's referred to by honorifics. Whoever it is, um, is called uh, the prince, uh, the one who dances in the shadows, um, the one who dances the, the prince of darkness, the one in the shadows. O oftentimes the full name being the prince who da uh, dances in the shadows or in your shadows okay. or in one's shadows. Often it's referred to by a sort of a, a, a pronoun. So it's, it's effectively as in your shadows being danced in. Um, right. But yeah, that's fun. Um, that's very get, fun. Now you get to find out what happens when you drip blood from different people on it. Try, try to get, try to get some blood from Khan and put that in there. What happens then? Get some blood from Cassius. See what happens. A little psycho blood. <laughs> <laughs> little psycho blood. Don't do it. The book gets no. telekinetic, telekinetic powers. <laughs> throws you across the room. The book starts the hunger for the source. <laughs> Uh, I'm uh. still looking forward to any of that. Um, right, uh, but after <laughs> only five days, not, ooh, Branda. Right, my my scrutiny roll. There's no such thing as scrutiny intelligence. Just make a scrutiny roll then. Perception. Right. Or yes, I can use perception, perception, which is slightly better. There you go. Thirty-four oh. out of thirty-one. Damn it. Um, you do manage to effectively cross-reference some ships in orbit around here. Um, since you've got time, you personally, you know, make a point of going up, um, having a check over them, using your cover as uh, effectively saying you're part of the Imperial um, Navy's um, effectively customs detachment. Effectively, any ship that comes into orbit, they have the prerogative that they can do a uh, search just in case. And you cross, you know, half a dozen ships off the list. The list, you know, is about 100 ships, but you cross half a dozen off. Seemingly fine decent reasons for being where they were good backstory no real um reason to think of them suspicious every little helps it is true i mean it's, it's not like the big you're lead like, you wanted but you're, you're cutting down the number of ships give it a year and it'll the list will be down to one and then we go on the hunt that's where the fun begins uh right so after about five days um, you get a, a message from Inquisitor Khan, which says he'll meet you at your halls of residence, which is currently effectively you've got like a floor in a hotel complex. Um, a couple of other um, scribes of the Inquisition are, are hold up there before they go to do their work on the uh, the library. And you will assemble, and uh, shortly later, um, Khan walks in, uh, again wearing uh, fine robes this time, not armor, uh, much more formal. Um, sort of gold embroidery, lots of white, um, seemingly still carrying his thunder hammer across his back. You can see the haft of it just sticking up. And he addresses you all. I have a mission. And you'll need it immediately. Particularly because of Carolinus's background in this matter. A research outpost, located in deep space outside of the warp storm, has recently gone silent. It is doing research for the Inquisition, and thus any investigation cannot be done without the Inquisition present. As such, I'm sending you as the appointed delegates to make sure this is carried out properly. To help you, we are sending a force from one of the nearby Inquisitorial Bastions who should be able to aid you in the manner. Fifty recently conscripted Imperial Guard will meet you in system before heading into the dead system around which Space Station Zebra orbits. I want you to find out why it's gone dead, what's going on, get it back online, and don't screw up. Any questions? Is uh, Space Station Zebra the outpost that you were referring to? 
Yes. Were there personnel on this station? Yes. There are approximately... 15 personnel, and there should have been 30 test subjects recently delivered. Test what subjects? sort of test subjects? He looks somewhat pained and says, uh, The work this station did involved exposing psychers to elements of the warp storm around there in an attempt to chart navigable pathways through it. Due to the high attrition I glance rate, sideways towards Cassius, then refocus my attention on Khan. It had been decided not to use sanctioned psychers and instead use the dregs of the black ships. Those which might otherwise be determined to be non-viable to be sent to Terra and disposed of. Any who were potentially stable enough to be able to make it to the space station to be tested were instead sent there and used to determine elements of the warp storm by amplifying their powers to levels which cause them to burn out. While I understand it has been effective, it is a detestable practice, which so far has been considered important enough to continue with. If you find any elements that this is too dangerous to be carrying on with, let me know, and I will make sure that the full heresy that has been unleashed there will be quashed as soon as you get back and send me your report. I like to imagine oh. the room is just really, really quiet right now, like it is here. Because <laughs> this is a terrible, terrible idea. <laughs> Let's just nuke it. Nuke it from orbit. Just, no. <laughs> are, are there other stations where study of the uh, warp storm is being done in a similar manner? There is one other station, yes. It is still broadcasting fine. No issues with them. Have they reported anything at all wrong? Space Station Upsilon is working perfectly adequately this time. As adequately as meddling with psychers can be. After a few moments, I speak up. And should we encounter any of these survivors? Is it a secondary objective to ensure their safety? Or are they not part of our priorities? Any personnel look to be considered inquisitorial property. And if they are exposed to heresy, you can purge them as you must. Any of the psychers who should have been burned out long ago you may consider dangerous and expendable as they would have been had the black ships done their normal dues with them I'm just making notes kind of mumbling aloud as I go save the crew if you can psychers are expendable I'm sure Cash has heard it. Two weeks ago, they received a new shipment of psychers. We got confirmation that they received the shipment okay. And then nothing. No response after that. Were there normal reports, like once a day, once a week reports that you would expect from the station? We would expect it any reports on any significant activity, such as taking on a new load of psychers. And then we would have expected weekly updates. And did any of those updates occur after the arrival of those? No. no. Okay. 
In addition, the normal psychic activity that we expect around such a station I've been informed has ceased. Just gonna look at the Cassius. What would it mean if there's no psychic activity in that area? Presumably that they're all dead. Even if there was something hostile on the station, I'd expect I'd expect to see some kind of psychic reverberation. Everything emits it in one way or another. Not everything, I murmur. Uh um, we should be off then. Everyone make scrutiny fellowship checks. Thirty-one out of twenty-five. Thirteen out of thirty-two. Okay, Sixteen out of twenty-five. Uh, Cassius and Carolinus pass. Um, Carolinus, as you as you he, he says, um, everyone like gives off psychic reverberations in one way or another. You see Khan smirk in a kind of at someone else's expense manner. Um, Cassius, you get this too to a certain extent. Um, and you really get the idea that this guy is kind of being a dick. You really don't like this guy. This this guy, honestly, he just appalls you. He doesn't like you. You don't like him. This guy is utterly like an asshole. He's a detestable human being to you. <laughs> Keep finding those TPS reports. You did get the memo that we're now we're now submitting them in triplicate, right? I'll send the I'll send the memo again. To make sure you have it. <laughs> Oh god. This thing kind of has to work out with Ravon for me because if it doesn't, this isn't looking real good. He's just going to mm -hmm. keep sending me on death missions until I'm out of the picture. <laughs> to be fair, Carolinus, when you see that smirk as well, you don't really like the guy. That smirk doesn't look friendly. This does sound like one of those missions where, where the story is that like it went silent. We sent in a team, but they didn't come back. Now we're sending in a proper team. But we're the yeah. We're, we're the, You're first the first team. team. We're the ones that go silent. Yes. Now this is so that, that we can wipe you out, like. so we can have a Space Marine story uh, next week, where we um, <laughs> like oh, they come at night mostly. Unleash your holy bolters upon the enemy. Uh, yeah, and he starts to talk you through the very the basics that effectively uh, there'll be a ship to collect you um, within an hour, so you better get ready quick, which is a very small warp capable skiff. Um, that's been chartered, which will take you to the system, um, dock you, check anything's okay. Uh, the protocol is going to be that you're going to meet up with the 50 guard conscripts in a small troop transport at the edge of the system, and then you're going to head in towards the station itself so that you've got backup when you get there. Yeah, 50 red shirts. What do you do? Worse than red shirts. Red shirts actually have Federation training. <laughs> well, these guys, these guys' job might just be to watch us go in and then shoot us in the back. Like, these guys legitimately, they handed them a book on how to be a soldier, didn't guarantee that they read it, and handed them a gun. And we're just like, all right, we're deploying you to this corner of the universe. Sucks to be you. While well, the others <laughs> kind of gloriously. absorb the information that Khan has, has given out, I'm quiet for a few moments, and I, I look to Khan. You mentioned that this mission was of specific importance uh, due to our uh, he mentioned me didn't he so I'm thinking back now did he mention Car Cassius or Carolinus because I could have uh, got the names you. mixed up yeah in what capacity uh, am I best able to serve in this regard in this particular mission I was led to believe that you have knowledge and background in psychers and in some of the uh, more arcane natures of the warp. Particularly, your view of the fact that the psychers are mere cattle for the Imperium and should be used thusly. I look sidelong at Cassius. My eyebrow slowly at, raises. Uh, Khan. Khan continues, completely doesn't care. Might be of use here. Very well. Remember that these we are psychers deemed not worthy of the trip to Terra. 
They are not the most dangerous psychers that are still put down, otherwise they will not be allowed on such a station. But they're the ones considered too unstable for long-term reliability, those too weak to survive, and those maybe slightly too powerful or too wayward or too old. Will we have full authority to access the station, or will there be aspects of the station which are locked off? And we'll have to, are we going to have to burn through bulkheads or anything like that? Do we know if the power is still online? We have not yet had a chance to check the station. That is your job. Should you need to investigate the station, though, investigate at your will. But remember that anything you find there is of top secret import to the Inquisition. After a moment, I begin. There's a, there's a notable pause uh, as I start to draw the, the words together. Interrogator, in light of our recent reason for being on this planet, are we to report this mission through the usual channels or direct to yourself? You may report this mission through the usual channels, which are to myself, and of course you can log your reports as you do normally. The last mission was kept to avoid any loss of face with the Inquisition as a whole. This is Understood. merely another simple task. I mean, and I'm sure asked. you will do the Emperor proud. Of course, it is naturally our goal Merely wish to know whether these uh, findings should be logged in official channels. Yes. Or whether reports should be de delivered to you in person. You may log them as usual. And you'd be Fair best enough. to put the last mission out of mind, as such incidents are not good for the reputation of the Inquisition as a whole. We are an organization to be feared, not an organization to lose library tickets he smiles as if that's, that. that's a joke that's a funny joke that he made that's as close as he gets to a joke I'm grinning I thought it was I don't funny laugh. <laughs> I don't laugh and my optical megadendrite is watching Cassius I'm stone faced I'm ice cold Okay. I'm Steve Austin yeah as, as you were like <laughs> honestly like stone cold towards him you really are getting the feeling, like, straight off of him that he's just not a nice person. Like, he is, you just really don't want to be around this guy. Like, <laughs> he's not. No. Brenda just, like, smirked a bit. Brenda, you're not particularly, Indeed, like... was a joke. You're not really, really enamored by this guy either, but, you know. He isn't, he isn't fully, like, just completely, like, an asshole to you yet. But he's certainly giving that impression to you, Cassius. Um, now, your transport leaves in less than an hour. Is there anything you require before you leave or any questions you might have? Do we have full security clearance for the station? Is there any credential we can receive so that we aren't stuck... Digging through locked doors every five seconds. I'm led to believe that the full credentials and so forth have been shipped over along with the 50 conscripts. They should have them for you. However, I can give you some credentials that I have access to, but I do not have access to the additional credentials that are required to access the more top secret parts. However, my basic inquisitorial access should be sufficient. And he hands you, uh, effectively, a data slate, which has on it um, some access codes. Okay, I'll take, I'll take the data, data slate. slate. Oh. oh, fine, you take As... the data slate then. Are we going to fight over it? Fight By over the way, it. I, don't fight, fight, I take the fight, data fight, slate fight, and I hand it to fight, Cassius. Fight, fight, fight. Carolinus, is the book in your room? Not in the room here, no. Okay, it's in the other room, that's fine. <laughs> that's the whole point of me getting the other room! <laughs> I don't know if you wanted to just keep it there or look at it there and then bring it back or whatever. Um, no, I didn't. I didn't bring it back. back that's fine. Me. I was just wondering. Any other questions? I'm 
tapping my long fingernails. I don't know what to say. No questions. Oh, sir. Tap, tap, tap. Tap, tap, tap. Very well. Saddle up. You leave in the hour. And with a sort of half turn robe sort of swishing out behind him, he leaves. I love how E.E. E. has these moments where he's like, you fuckers need to ask an important question right now. This is your last chance to ask an important question for something that's going to happen in a few minutes. You going to ask the question? No? Okay, you're <laughs> fucked. Just send the Imperial Guardsmen first. And as they're just like, ah! and they get dragged into like doorways and shit, we'll be like, all right, we're leaving. Exterminate us. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's what's going to happen. We're going to go in there, and it's going to be like the scene from Jurassic Park where the raptors are grabbing people in the tall grass. That's what's going to be like. These Imperial Guardsmen, I go make it. <laughs> I hope nope. the ship we're in has the firepower to take out the station. So you could just well, be like jumping out in the sky. He's like, blow it up. Just blow it up now. Go. I told it's, you guys to put the prowl lance on. As you get up in this. Yeah, as you get up in the Sky Beast, um, you just about get into the hold of the small warp capable skiff. Uh, it literally uh, before has we do a that, though, hangar bay. Okay. Um, before we all, all go, um, before we even leave the room, I tell you guys, we have an hour to prepare. Cassius, is there anything in particular that we should bring or should expect here? Mm. Yeah, what, what do you He expect? spoke of my expertise in this matter. I feel that he was overlooking yours. I don't think he cares much for my opinion about anything, in all fairness. But given the breadth of everything we've seen throughout our travels, when we arrive there, it could be anything. I've seen so many new creatures on this trip that... Who knows? My only suggestion is perhaps that we put the guardsmen out front? <laughs> I've no idea. Well, Cassius, what you've told me in the past has led me to believe that you know what the inside of a black ship is, is like. And as the interrogator made clear, so do I. I have an idea of what we might encounter here. And it doesn't particularly bode well for you. My ears, my ears are pushed all the way up. I, I'm, my, I'm curious. If I had to say my inclination, it's more than likely that this area was psychically active due to all the suffering and all the testing going on. Something may have crawled through from that excess emotion. But until crawled we arrive, we won't know. Through from Indeed. the warp? Yeah, and so looking at Garrett, because I understand he doesn't understand how this all works, I, I, I look as though I'm like kind of looking into my own head to think for a moment. I'm, the warp is... It flows and it's chaotic, but when there's mass emotion on a human scale it condenses and when that happens it can push its way through from the immaterium especially if they're maintaining open gates and things of that nature to test with the subjects that they have on the station everyone there is psychically active that creates a pretty bright beacon for anything that wants to get across from the other side whilst Cassius is, is explaining this to Garrett and, and whatever Garrett, however Garrett responds I step over to Branda and I, I murmur as if not to interrupt Cassius as he's trying to explain it. As if I'm sort of um, sympathetic to the fact that this might be difficult for Garrett to take on board. And Cassius might have to explain it a little bit more. Brenda, if you could begin the preparation of the Sky Beast. I'm afraid I've only had time to repair the off-ramp not have any serious look at weapon mounting. Perhaps it's something we can discuss on the trip there. Meanwhile, I'm going to uh, send a message to my order. They may have some knowledge of the station. It's not uncommon for members of my order to be stationed on static laboratories like these. Of course. I'm hoping that a map will be available to us, the facility. Uh, As he says that, I hand him... Yeah. Yeah, I, I tap the data slate. We'll leave Cassius to the enviable task of explaining the warp and its intricacies to Garrett. Okay, um, 
if you because you've been on here a little while and because you've now got an important job and there are some inquisitorial stuff around if any of you can think of something you want to requisition real quick you can do try to do so in minus 10. is there a thing that can nullify psychers maybe not at your requisition level <laughs> It's yeah, like all of those things so. tend to be like really hard to find, like extremely rare. You really can I see if I can get hold of something a... we could throw at them? Would I be able to see if I can get hold of a, a of a mass heretic purging device? <laughs> you mean you mean code name Flamer? Yes. With a minus ten, yes, you can. Okay, that's minus twenty normally, isn't it? Uh, uh yes, because it it's rare. 10 normally, I, I don't know. Either way, you failed. Uh, uh, I'm wrong. Actually, oh. Cassius, what were you looking for? Oh, I was just trying to get a gas mask. Oh. Did that get you a gas oh, mask? I do oh. have a rebreather no. of my own. No. My threshold should have been 27 instead of ah. whatever's on there. I'm just looking at the rarity of a flame. It'll only take me a moment because I'm not I think flame might sure. be minus 10 normally. Well, I'll just roll the, the dice. And then yeah, roll the dice. It and if, if, it's, if it's within that threshold, we're not sure about. It will be knowing us. Yes, it is in the threshold. Please. We need to look it up. Oh, yeah. is it? No, no. I, I fail on the mine. Yeah. It was minus. Yeah. If it okay. was worse, it would be 12 is my. Yeah. Target. Anyone want so to I grab anything that. else? Yeah, I'm going to try for another hot shot charge sure. pack. But Go for it. I, I have 11. 11%. Okay. I don't think of anything in particular I would need. Though that, that does remind me I need to grab some ammo for the, the guns out of the like 100 we have now. Uh, sure. What do you want to grab for ammo? I'll just take, like, 30 of the shots, the normal ones. Okay. You auto gun shots, yeah? Yeah, for my, my stub. So since we're, since we're rolling out on a new mission, I assume we all, like, all my uh, laser charges, yeah. that's all redone, and yeah. fate is also replenished, and wounds are fate gone. Is replenished, and wounds okay. are replenished, yeah. So, uh, in the meantime, while we're waiting for the skiff or while we're loading on the skiff or whatever, would there be any way to look up, I'm, I'm probably discussing this with Cassius, would there be any way to look up what type of safety protocol these uh, outposts would have had? Because obviously it didn't work on Outpost Zebra, but perhaps uh, Epsilon could shade some light onto what they attempted that failed. Yeah, so in terms of the uh, defenses, the data site does have a full rundown. Um, the, the station is equipped with a turret-mounted uh, light lance cannon, uh, along with three macro cannons. Uh, the, it's designed in kind of a three-spoke design, so there's one macro cannon in each uh, segment, uh, lances on top. Um, it's got uh, very heavy void shielding, actually a lot more void shield than you normally expect, partly because um, it's designed to be very close to the edge of the warp storm. So the warp storm can send some stuff its way. In addition, it's got an extra strong geller field, which helps protect against the warp. Um, the actual protections against the psychers that they have there is each psycho is effectively in like a fluid cocoon um, from which they are utilized. Uh, each psycho has an explosive collar added. Um, each psycho has um, the tanks can be poisoned. The area can have the air shut off. The area can be ejected into space um, directly via explosive bolts to just loose the entire compartment. Um, there are blast doors both internally to the structure as well and on the side of the compartments so the compartments can be shut down. Um, the compartments have their own air supply that requires the generator so effectively you can just cut off the air supply and should the air supply be poisoned it doesn't affect one or the other. Um, there are defenses in place uh, in terms of um, inward facing turrets uh, in a couple of locations along with uh, shape charges on the door so that should people like try and mob a door you can close the door and then the shrapnel will spray inwards from that door along with a so once we get, arms. once we get to the station we'll get to see if they did any of those uh, uh ejections of the psychers you said they're all in separate compartments uh yeah but you can't eject the compartments individually you can eject like effectively the entire lab modules oh, which okay. each contain up to uh, about three dozen psychers but with the requisition, can I just get a glow globe in case the sure. lights are out? It's abundant. What does that mean? Plus 30, I think. I have to type 30 in a random box on my character sheet. So it's no. minus 10, plus 30, I think. Oh, I just did plus 30. Uh, it Which would mean I just 30. get it, so I guess I just don't. 
Yeah, uh, I would have to check if it is plus 30. Um, Cassius, can you check that since you have a rule book in front of you? What is abundant? I don't have a, I don't have a rule book. <sighs> what? Okay, I'll I will be check. Typing. Oh, you, if you want to just check it, it's just at the very beginning of the armory section. It just says what the um, difficulties are. I don't know why they just don't put numbers. That's what I do for my homeries. Um, but anyway, uh, whether you got the glow globe or not, you quickly get to the warp capable skiff in orbit. The hangar has room just enough for the sky beast. Um, the doors close behind you. You are led to your rooms. You have to effectively fit in with hot bunking among the uh, two crew who are there, along with a very young navigator. Surprisingly young. You've actually not probably seen navigators this young before. Uh, he's got fresh cranial implants and everything. Um, and you quickly set off uh, in the direction of uh, the localized warp storm of the Xmas sector. Khan is really trying to kill us. <laughs> Given us like the the ship with the with the squeaky wheel, and the guy who doesn't but, actually know how to fly hey, the thing. Hey, at least it's not the servitor of the squeaky wheel, okay? That shit has gone wrong enough times. I think he's a little upset that I snitched. I'm getting that feeling. Um, Why would Ravon be like, "Hey, so Cassius specifically told me about this thing he shouldn't have told me about"? Because Ravon and Connor are like old buddies. Come on, they, play, they played high school football together. You know that. <laughs> Abundance is itself- plus thirty. Oh uh, yeah, so yeah, you didn't get yeah. it just. Um, no, the uh, the ship itself does actually have now. four servitors on board. Um, the servitors are effectively utility models in addition to one engineering model, um, which basically look after the runnings of the ship. Um, so from there, you make it quite rapidly to the edge of the warp storm. Um, you're actually not that far away from Row. Um, but the world is not marked on the map because, effectively, it is a dead world with one Inquisition stronghold floating in orbit. Um, it is not an important... Well, there are many dead worlds in the Imperium. They're just not suitable for habitat. And you quickly make it to the edge of the sector. Um, as you go out of warp, the blast doors open around the potholes, and you can see starlight. And then in the forward direction on the other side of the solar system is a rolling flicker of scarlet and orange and purplish energies that is the warp storm wow what the hell is that i'm face pressed up against the window you can't you can't peel me away it does look rather mesmerizing and as you look into it like, it seems to, like, get even more intricate, and you seem to seem, like, little patterns within patterns. But as you kind of, like, stare at the patterns and try and work them out, you realize that that's just noise, and there's actually a pattern deeper within that noise. It's, it's really mesmerizing. This is the edge of the warp storm that's been plaguing this sector for so many years. I suggest you don't look at it too closely. You might fall in. I smirk. Does it move? How is it? How is it such a threat? You don't want to find a... yourself in it. You know how when we initially talked, the first time you went into the warp about how the shielding was protecting us from what was outside. Well, that over there is what it was protecting us from. The only difference this time is that instead of us going into its territory, that's it coming into ours. You get the sense that Garrett doesn't know what the hell you're talking about. Okay. He looks really confused. Get, getting that idea, I say, Garrett, simply understand that men whose minds are far stronger than yours and far stronger than any of ours have stayed over long into that abyss. Their minds did not come back intact. Don't look at it too much or think about it too much. You don't really want to know its intricacies. Garrett, you think you found another pattern within the pattern, within the pattern. It's, it's, it's so curious, though. How do you how do you not look at it? Garrett, I make an effort. Do you remember your to, reason for tell slaying? Tell me there's a shutter I can slam yeah, down. Yeah, there's shutters. No, no, the, the, the shutters aren't like that, human I, just, I, I go stand oh. up next to Garrett and I put my hand on his shoulder. Garrett, remember your confession to me as to the reason you destroyed that Xeno? that you felt that we were ensorcelled by it. I do. Well, that out there has very much the same effect 
on people like you. So look away and let's get on with what we came here to do. I'll nod a few times. I'll nod a few times. I'm still staring at it. Uh huh. I lo- I looked at Cassius and I shrug. There, you said there was no shutters. I mean, there are shutters, but they're lo- not like human control. Like they're designed to be closed um, when you're effectively in transit in the warp. They're on the outside of the window. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I've got you could twenty-two willpower. Open. What do you expect? Yeah. I slowly like slide my hand in front of his eyes. <laughs> <laughs> you have like a little like you have like a dick butt written on your palm or something like that. <laughs> dick butt. <laughs> Look, it's a giraffe pooping. Isn't that funny? Look, Garrett. And Garrett, as soon as that hand fully gets in front of your face, uh, make a willpower check at plus thirty. All right. <laughs> he fails this. I like how you're enraged. You consider Cash just attacking you. <laughs> Zero nine. He he rolls Look, you just Look at shake that. your head and you snap out of it and. Uh, yeah, you, you oh, don't want to think about that at, at too much. Roll me a d10. All right. <laughs> I like how like we have to read heretical books and like tomes and whatnot and get corruption. He just looks at the warp and gets it. What's like, your intelligence ooh, spark, bonus? Please. Corruption. My intelligence bonus is three. You take one point of insanity. Isn't it supposed to be one plus the difference, or? Uh, no, no, it's it's the D10 minus your like ins- it, your okay. bonus. So for this, it'd be a it'd be a one. Yay! <laughs> I just I turn immediately over to Cassius and go, "Wow, thank you." I think what happened. The warp is a tempting place. Do your best not to let it catch your eye as you go by the windows any longer. I'll try to remember that. I'm a- and as if, you know, just deciding, look, let's not tempt fate. I walk on the outside. <laughs> of Garrett from now on. So you'd have to look past me as we're walking abreast down the corridor. Every time he gets by a window and the warp is there, one of your mecha dendrites like pops out and it's like, hello. Like gets his attention real fast. <laughs> like when you kind of get a baby to just, take a picture, you're like, look just, at the duck. Look at the just duck. Put, <laughs> just put little finger puppets on the mecha dendrites. It'd be, it'd be fantastic. Oh, you just turn the stab light on full blast so we can't see. Oh, that's a good point, actually. I, I could just turn it up to the highest intensity. Yep. Just boom. Temp- so you just temporarily blind dancing light. Yeah, but e- even, yeah. even Atari got Stevie Wonder to do an advertisement for them in a newspaper that said, if I could play video games, I'm sure I'd play Atari. I mean, y- y- you can't... <laughs> You can't stop someone who wants to do something from doing shit. Even if they can't see, they'll still try. I bet that's Stevie Wonder is well. terrible at Pong. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, within uh, half an hour, you've exited warp very close to the point you wanted to. Um, and uh, effectively, the lieutenant, they don't have anyone more senior um, on the skiff, comes forwards and reports, Sir, we're at the location that you wanted. And... No one here? We're at Zebra? Oh, we're on the outside of the system. We were asked to come to the outside of the system where you were meeting up with some of our ship? Uh, indeed. We're supposed to be looking for an Imperial Guard regiment which has been summoned to this area. Well, I can scan the entire system if you want. I look at... I look at Carolinas. Would that be wise? I'll be honest with you, Cassius. I couldn't tell you at this point. We're... I've not been to this sector. I do not know what we were expecting to find. I'll look at the data slate and see if there's there's any information on a specific place that we were meant to get to. Um, I'll be I'll be asking Brander at this point. How would we go about searching for debris of Imperial ship wreckage? Okay, so for start, uh, Carolinas, um, because of the nature of the, the warp and travel times, it could be a bit iffy. You could have been there first or they could have been there first. Uh, they were meant to wait for you if they got there first. Um, if you got there first, you were the prerogative that you could go and investigate at your whim. So, you know, you seem to have got here first. You can go investigate at your whim. Uh, how They were estimated um, with about a 90% probability to get there before you. They were slightly closer. They're actually on their way through one of the charted um, routes through the warp to go to the front lines versus the orcs um, as a, a re- freshly recruited um, platoon. Uh, so they should have got here first, but there's still a chance they might be behind you. 
Um, Branda, in terms of scanning, uh, you know off the top of your head that uh, if you do like a full survey scan, um, it will give away your position a little bit. Depends, you know, the chances are much higher. You could do a passive scan. You just sit there absorbing information. Uh, or you could just go completely lights off. Uh, you would know that the craft is currently effectively running silent because you haven't told them to do anything else and you're here clandestinely-ish. Um, in terms of searching for debris, the same thing applies. If you know where the debris can is, I, it's a lot easier. Can I roll for ship stealth? I'm good at that. You do not have any idea how to pilot the ship. As far as you are aware, this is this is done by arcane magics. Yeah, but I, see, look, uh... I, could, I could go invisible inside the ship. There you go. Close enough. <laughs> they cannot find you. You are you are hidden. Yes. I, I look to Brander and while kind of scratching my beard, I say, so if we were to use the Auspex to map this area, would that give us away at all? Perhaps if we were being looked for. Not what sure what you the advise? station's capabilities are. Um, a passive scan shouldn't be dangerous. Something more involved should probably follow. A passive we'll scan would more it. than likely detect anything that isn't actively trying to hide. Space is cold. Things that aren't trying to hide are hot. It doesn't take much to find them. If they're attempting to mask their heat signatures, much more difficult. I wouldn't imagine that the, scan... the guard ship is trying to hide itself. At least so. An active scan would broadcast effectively our position. What if we were to start moving, actively scan, and then the moment the scan ends, double back so that they would follow the initial trajectory, and at least that would give some false flag? We would still have shown that we were in the system and looking for something. That's true. They would have a... I mean, the system seems very large. If we go active in any way, they'll at least know somewhat close to where we are. It'd be very quick for them to find us, I would bet, even if we went silent at that point. Uh, Brenda, That's a terrible idea. I'm, Brenda, roll, uh, roll your knowledge of the Imperial Navy. All right. Mm, no. Okay. That's Cassius. Oh, that's Cassius. That was science. Oh, okay. Uh, also, no. 41, 31. Fine. Um, Cassius, uh, you sign this in, in this area. It's a very large area to try and sign a since uh, solar system. Um, so you can't really get very much. It's much more designed for objects that you can hold or localized rooms. But uh, what you get is a toll of emotions and a royal of uh, bubbling almost, a power, um, which is emanating from the warp storm this close. Is it an in-character or out-of-character question? In-character. Okay. Just interrupting Brander, I assume he's brain farting all over the place right now. How rude. Brander, would we know where this Imperial ship would be coming from? Where where would they be approaching the system? You said they were coming from a known uh, warp path. We could probably expect them in roughly a certain place. And maybe that we simply need to wait a little longer for them. I'm in agreement. Obviously, Possibly Slate did they... suggest they would be here by now. It is possible that they may be a little bit later than expected. We can perhaps afford... Um, and then looking at the data slate and the information that's there, um, would, I, would I be able to estimate like a, a, a reasonable time window that realistically, if they're any later than that, then they either are Effectively, the time window is giving a probability on them. Um, the probability yeah. that they will be here within the next 36 hours and no later uh, is 95%. The probability they'll be here by now is about 80, 85%. Okay, I'll, I'll present that, that no more than a day and a half. And I would suggest we just go dark and wait for them. See if anything shows up. You instruct the, the crew to um, passively scan. There's no detriment to listening. It's only if we actively cry out in search of a response that we will betray our position. About how far, just out of character, about how far away did we arrive from the 
operate or station uh, zebra uh, pretty thing. far out on the system uh the closer you are to the gravity well the harder it is to get in um the star you're currently around is actually a blue giant oh not a blue giant sorry but it's, it's a blue secret star which is gigantic um so you're pretty far out in addition to the fact that the warp storm nearby you need to be a little bit further out to be safe you're a good while out from the center of this uh system um space station zebra is probably about 20 hours away from you because it's not ma massively close into the star or you'd be irradiated to death Part of the reason it's got really powerful void shields is to make sure that long term, people don't die of radiation too quickly. Um, but you're probably I'm twenty hours said away. Too quickly, not at all. all right, well, while that's going on, I'm going to go and I'm going to see if I can find some just I don't know, leather um, clips, just random bits of repair. Um, like, you know, screws and stuff like that. And I'd like to try and make a harness for our dear friend Garrett. Literally blinkers. You're making him a horse blinder? Sure. Yes. Make a techies test at, like, plus 20. And while you're making horse blinders for Garrett, Garrett is making use of this ship's small hallway to try out his new long glass. He's put up little targets at the end of the hallway and just. Oh wow! To... As soon as you do that, <laughs> like the lieutenant runs over to you, and goes, "What are you doing? You can't fire that in here. You might punch the hull." No, no, it's it's on the lowest setting. I just want to see if I can hit the. T it doesn't have lower settings. Out of character, doesn't I have mean, low uh, settings. Yeah, it has the normal settings of a lasgun. Like uh, you can fire a long okay, lasgun. I, okay. Well, what I mean is like. Pretty much any weapon I've ever fired has had uh, a, a way that you can either use like non-lethal rounds or a low setting or something, oh, like even oh, a beanbag um, shot or something. Yeah, effectively, like the la the las gun itself will have effectively a way to uh, correct the targeting and stuff, which is it just fires effectively like a normal beam of light in a like a normal optical range, so that you can see and then you can adjust the sights. Um, it won't do oh, any damage, fantastic. but uh, it allows you to aim. Uh, yeah, I rolled um, a ninety-seven out of seventy-two. Carolina, for some way, reason. How you just can't find yeah, any spare find leather. It. I mean, I'll I'll keep looking. I, you know, this this will be an extended test. Yeah. That's what usually crafting is. It's a small yeah. ship, though. How how many hours does it take? Per well, it would take a few more hours to get another one. However, while this is going on, I, Brander, I assume you're helping them like look over the passive scan results. Yeah. Yeah, um, I'm showing this lieutenant how to use the the long lies now. Showing him it's on the, the, see the light. Like, at no, the end I need there? to get back to. Uh, yeah, Brander, I, I've, can you I've make already me got a. His... Um, I've already got his hands on the gun. I'm holding him. See, right here. You just, you just pull this, and you see the little light show up over there? Perception it right, right in the center at of the plus target. 20 because of your background. Mm -hmm. And the guy's, like, really, like, like oh, oh, I, I don't know what I'm... He <laughs> doesn't know why he's ah, doing Ah, you're doing fine, this. lad. Just pull the trigger. One! Whoa, wow! Wow! wow. Oh, one. Zero one. Wow. Dude! Okay, um... What do I find? You study these passive scan results. And you study them at some depth, and you're not sure what you see. You triple check it. The station is there. All of its systems appear to be offline. Um, as far as you can tell. Uh, even to an extent, the, the very integrated systems, including stuff like uh, gravity, seem to be offline in some sections. Gravity is on in a few, but in general, um, everything else is offline. Apart from life support, which is online. Um, power to doors, etc., offline except for the ones that have um inbuilt um charges for instance like the the airlock doors etc have some basic functionality but they don't have power enough to open um that said by the way if you do dock a, do uh, a door to a door you can actually use your ship to power the airlock so you can actually board the station if you wish um you do find however the troop transport it is docked with the station oh shit um in addition I hear a you lot of cursing out. from whatever room the, uh, like, Brander is in. The moment he what, makes this what, discovery, we're like, oh god, know, what have they done? No. He needs to know what colorful language you're using. It's well, important. What, 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 are the, what are the 40k swear words? Uh, frack. Frack. <laughs> frack. Feth. Feth. That's, Feth. uh, Southern Universe, but you could use it if you want. It's, it's native to Tanith. <laughs> Southern Universe. He'll just go through all of the swear words that he knows in in sequence, alphabetically. <laughs> Stupid sons! What are they? I can't believe! Oh my god! 
Emperor. <laughs> you also get oh there my is, God, uh, possibly a third <laughs> ship um, or derelict or station. Or, you get effectively a brief energy return from something that appears to be some sort of Imperial transport. Um, very much like so, your ship, actually. Right, well, you, I'll, you I'll go to make my report properly. to It one. appears to be maybe some sort of derelict or drifting ship or maybe an eddy in the warp storm, but it seemed to briefly be there. I'll, I'll call everyone to wherever I am. By micro or whatever. Okay. I go. And then I, when, when they've I, all arrived... I honestly, I honestly don't understand how this whole, like, ship being turned off works, so I'm, like, tiptoeing, trying not to make any noise on the ship very carefully touching the walls when I push the door open. to be open. fair, he is no so noise. quiet. He's pretty damn good at stealth. Uh, like, a lot of you would just turn around and, like, suddenly Garrett's there. It's not quite how Who's stealth works, Garrett? but sure. All right, so when they're all gathered, I say, we've got a problem. I've located the troop transport, and it is already docked with the station. I don't know what they're doing, but they yeah, shouldn't be doing it. drove them to do that. As he says that, I hand raise my hand and kind of wipe my brow, and I go, "Oh, God, Emperor protects." I hope for their sakes that they haven't done anything in the station yet, but it Does... appears that the station is running on absolute minimum functionality. There is life support, um, some gravity, um, but pretty much everything isn't working beyond some important doors like airlocks. Can you tell if the station is intact? Is From what any, I can gather, yes. Is there any damage? Have have any part have any portions of the psyker areas been ejected? Uh, as far as you could tell, passive scan. It'd be hard to tell. As far as you could tell, you couldn't see anything around the station that appeared to be an ejected block. Um, you did find an anomalous uh, reading of some kind, some sort of weird EM signature um, just below the lance turret on one side of the station. Um, you're not sure particularly beyond that on a passive scan, but there was a very weird um, EM signature coming from there. Well, I'll relay that, and then also that there does seem to be some other ship of some some sort in the system, possibly just another? a drifting wreck. Couldn't really get much information apart from the fact that it, well, it's yeah. somewhat similar to ours. Does it have an identifier? Couldn't really get anything from it. It might not even be real. I say we should investigate. I'm curious. As am I. But we should move forward with caution. Brandon, does our ship... Have we got void suits? Do we? Uh, yeah, we've got um, a couple of void suits. I mean, they're not particularly good repair or anything. They're not designed for combat, but yeah, we've got a few void suits. As long as they're designed for keeping us al alive in the void, then... It should be. Uh, we may. If you need them. And he oh. pulls out, like, yes. four dusty, some places, like, taped up void suits. I look du at them, and, and I actually murmur a void. curse. But but it's it's very heavily accented. It, it's the sort of curse that that might only be used in a very small population on some backwater or anything. But and it uh, happens to be in high. It's clearly a, like <laughs> yes, it happens in high Gotham. It's like it's basically a hex. It's like oh my god, what is that thing? But then it's like when I, I look see up these, at him, and I I'm give like, out oh, a like, really quiet laugh. Obvious. Just disgust at the at the disappearance. I have a quick look over it and just check that it, it is actually sealed, especially the one with tape on it. Uh, yeah, you can see quick check. if they would. Um, roll me intelligence. Uh, tech yeah. use. I get tech use test. Tech use on intelligence. Okay. I am not doing a trust fall in void suits. No. Zero I've nine. got a nine fifty two. Yeah, I'm void um, board. I know my void suits. Yeah, you know your void suits. You look over these. They actually look like someone has kept them in good repair. Like, you know, they've been makeshift repaired. But it, it looks like someone whose life might one day depend on them has made sure quite regularly that the things still hold pressure. And seemingly okay. they do. Well, as I'm, as I'm looking through it, the, the, the curse is, you know, abate. And then it slowly turned into, hmm, hmm. Uh, so, sort of slightly 
more okay, not as bad, not as bad as it first looked. And I nod, nod to the uh, was it the lieutenant who uh, yeah. offered them or something? Yeah, effectively, the do only all the suits do. have. Hmm? Do all the suits have duct tape on them? Uh, to some extent, some of them have like uh, bits where the like maybe a punch has been welded together. Effectively, like the plastic has been melted into a little blob. Well, I'm, I'm going to find one that has uh, an obvious piece of tape across the ass. I'm going to hold that up to Cassius. I found yours already. I hold back a smirk. <laughs> with, with... When it does come to picking them, I'm going to make sure that I get to pick one before Garrett does. Okay, you quickly snap <laughs> up one that doesn't have the fractured helmet. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going out there. Cassius, you seem to be under the impression that you might have a choice when the time comes. It's better to be in one of these things and not need to use it than not be in one of them when you do. By the way, Brenda, can you roll me um, intelligence minus 20? Whoa, minus 20. This isn't going to work. <laughs> Target. <laughs> negative I've already seven. got 19. I can't possibly roll anything. 21 out of 11. Oh, that would have been a good roll, no. too. No. Um, yeah, don't worry about it. <laughs> don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. I definitely don't want to leave the ship. I'm staying in here with the crew. <laughs> uh, Everything's okay. I, I, okay. I'm, I'm pestering Brander. Uh, the, the ship that you said might have been similar to to this skiff that we're on. Uh, did it look like it had been used recently? Or can you tell us anything more about it? Couldn't tell much about it. It could have been a drifting wreck. Something. Yep. Passive scan doesn't give you very much information. Is I would advise just... investigating it in case it was relevant. But we well, also need to get to the station quickly on account of the fact that the guardsmen seem to have taken matters into their own hands. Effectively, and you identify most of these ships, by the way, by um, the signature given off by their uh, energy core. So effectively, the plasma reactor, the size of it, the heat output, the EM signature, in addition to their engines. Um, yeah. That's the majority given of Given that, I, I, I do mention, Brando, the fact that you found it at all means that there was something to find. It isn't just some debris floating in space. It clearly had some radiation of some nature, heat, electromagnetic. It was singing into the void. You simply heard it. That implies that something is happening there. Now, we either Can investigate, investigate it or not. Then? Yes, uh, that is my recommendation. Again, we can move near enough to get a better idea of what it might be. And if it warrants further investigation, I pat the void suits. Notably, I've got the least damaged one because I looked over all of them and I held on to the one that was the best. Okay, so oh, Brandon, be you've both be, got, you know, be honest. Places. You found you found the only one that was made for a fatty because it needs to house all your mechadendrites somehow. <sighs> You're so mean. You, you, wouldn't be <laughs> you gotta fit them Ooh. somewhere. I've clearly locked on to the fact that people are reserving the good and the bad suits here and noting that the bad ones are the only ones left. I'm flat out refusing to go outside the ship. Like, yeah, no, 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 yeah. There's, there's, a, a, there's, a, there's an eh one left, and then there's one that has, like, the visor has obviously cracked, and there's a big lump of tape I'm like, not, across. I'm not trusting my it's life the, the, the point one. to eh. <laughs> I've already said I'm not going to trust these things. I, I, I was uh, just pointing out Cassius that he can have the one with the hole in the butt. So what do you want us to do? Do you want us to move in towards the station quietly, or...? Burn in, or just stay here, or active scan, or, you know. I look to Brander. Move quietly towards the other ship we located. Uh, Try and be quick without... He seems a little bit embarrassed for a second. He's like, I, I can't quite see the other ship. I mean, you're better at reading those scans than I am. Damn. All right, I'll work out the coordinates. Okay, you, you go over to the, the effectively the flight cognate and you start looking over the screens. Um, you can't find anyone. bring you some cup noodles and coffee if you're going to uh, do his job me, for him. Roll me uh, intelligence check now. Oh, no. You you spend a lot of time studying these. If, at initial glance, you cannot find it again. Uh, 95 out of 31. Honestly, the background like fluctuations of the warp here, um, and it was hard to find before. You cannot find it now. Damn. Seems to have disappeared. 
I don't that, like the sound of that. There is an asteroid belt um, around the edge of the system and uh, near the station. It's kind of hard to... You could lose it in the background there. Or it could have, you know, eclipsed by one Can of I the I try asteroids. to have a look as well? Sure, yeah. Um, you don't have quite the same background at looking at the scans, so it will be a slightly harder threshold for you, but uh, sure. Okay. What do I roll? Uh, it'll be an intelligence check. Just intelligence, okay. And what modifier? Uh, just roll intelligence check, and... Uh, uh, there'll be different thresholds for different things. Yeah. There are different, yeah. different thresholds for different things. Um, 77, yeah, you, you you look at it, you can't really make out much. Uh, as Branda points out the couple of things he's pointed out, like the ship and the certain readings on the station, you can just about make them out. Um, but of of the previous um, wreck, there is no, no seemingly no sign. Well, I'm not best pleased with the idea that there is a ship out there moving around that we've now lost track of, but Given that, the only thing left that we do know of is the station, and we came here with a purpose. We should at least go there. It might but, be wise Lieutenant, to I recommend report. you keep a close eye on your surroundings. Uh, yep, yeah, I, sh I shall do. Um, thank you. Uh, we'll, we'll take her in nice and slow. Um, and as, as he says that, you know, he heads back in and starts to uh, have the ship orientate. The navigator now comes out of his little cubby hole. He literally is like a little cubby hole behind um, the flight deck, which is very small. And he's holding his head and groaning. And he sees you guys. Hey, I, I'm just going to go use the jump. And he runs down towards the toilet at the other end of the compartment. And you hear the sound of someone throwing up. I look to the left hand. What's is wrong with your friend? Navigator? Uh, I'm not sure, but being close to this can't have any good effect on someone. He nods up towards I, one of the windows. My optical mechadendra just swoops down and peers in the cubby hole. Do uh, I see anything in there? In the cubby hole itself is effectively like a load of cables and plugs and wires and little view screens, mm -hmm. all attached to different like sockets and so on that are all seemingly hanging limp. Um, and in the middle is a vaguely human-shaped space on a seat where uh, he mm -hmm. effectively lives for most of his time aboard. My mic, With my Navy background, would I, like, know if that is common? Yeah, on a very small ship. to be so um, shaken. Well, uh, navigator is so shaken. It, it, navigators can certainly be discomforted by a background warp storm, um, uh, maybe especially a rookie navigator. Um, it, can be, it can be very taxing. So we get the rookie pilot and the rookie navigator. Yes. I mean, the rookie pilot is just a lieutenant. You don't know he, how rookie he is, but uh, the navigator certainly seems a rookie. I bet he Khan sat there and suits. told he sat there and told Brander, uh, "You're better at everything than I am, so you do it." <laughs> at this point, I nods to the lieutenant, take it in, take us in slow, and then I walk back to where Cassius and uh, Garrett are. At, have they made any attempt to put on their void suits? I'm not putting that damn thing on. No. Hell no. Absolutely not. How long Cassius, is it going to take to get to the station? We are going to be entering a station where we don't know who's in control of its faculties. We already know that it has the ability to jettison compartments or simply open bulkheads. I strongly recommend you put it on. So your best suggestion is to have me put on a suit with holes in it? It's the exact same as going in like this. At that point, I just offer him the one I've been holding. I'm willing to stake my life on the fact that I've checked them all and they're perfectly serviceable. Sounds and like I a deal to me. And I take that yep. suit. <laughs> I, I just take the one with with the, the tape across his backside. Mm -hmm. Okay. That Don't call me later. That the uh, broken visor of the big tape for Garrett. Um... As you move in towards the station, um, is there anything anyone wants to do? Anyone want to just spend time sitting yeah, in front of the I want to put a little bit radar? more tape along the side of his of his uh, <laughs> visor. Just okay. roll actually quite tape. a lot of tape. I'm really tape. making sure that Garrett, Garrett, do you want to let him do this? No peripheral vision. I'm not Careful, even going to lower I'm, his I'm perception. Not the suits. Okay, okay, uh, yeah, but the last suit now has like only a thin sliver of forwards. Um, will you look at the sensors? 
I oh, attempted sinusians. to sinusians okay. again, but I have terrible sinusians. For yeah, the background of the warp around here really is messing with you. Like, it'll be it'll be difficult to find anything, particularly in this mess, um, uh, especially at that range if you're trying to go towards the station from here. So it's, it's a few hours still. Um, Brando, is there anything you want to do on the journey? Um, perhaps look more at, like, the, the plans for the station work out, like, okay. good routes to take. Um, I, I was going to, like, come up with, like, plans for the guardsmen to move through the station, but then apparently they just did that themselves, the idiots. Apparently. Yeah, so uh, you just effectively spend the next few hours memorizing the, uh, the station to memory. Um, it takes you about, you know, probably about 26 hours to get in, since you're going a little bit slower. Um, Do we notice anything on the way in? Anything obvious? Like, I'm assuming we're doing scans the whole time on the way in, at least uh, passive scans. The lieutenant does not notice anything on the way in. I guess I could look at the, the, the information at some point, see if I can spot any stuff again. Okay, uh, between that and um, memorizing the plans, sure, you can have one more roll. Uh, it'll be a perception awareness check, because you are trained in reading the, uh, the outputs of these things. 96. Wow. 96 out of 31. Uh, I've lost it. In fact, like, an errant strand of warp energy uh, comes dangerously close to the ship, and uh, the sensors temporarily fry out. Um, you rolled yeah. so bad, you broke their ship. You, you, you have stunned This is my payment for the one. You uh, have stunned I failed every the roll ship. since it. It, it comes back half ship, an hour right. later. Um... Everything seems to be as it how, was. How far out were we from the station? It was 20 hours, but we're moving in slow and quiet yeah, right so now. Yeah, you're moving right? in 26 hours now. Okay. Uh, would I be able to try and tack use the, the void suit that I've got here and make some adjustments to it so that my macadandrites can be outside, but the suit's still sealed? Ooh, yeah, you can try that. Um, I'm, yeah. I'm going to assume you're being cautious about this. So yeah, if it doesn't absolutely. work, you're not going to try anything. So it'll be a normal tech use test. It would be easier, but there'd be a chance of failure. But you're going to be cautious. And yeah, 29 versus 52. You can get all your dendrites outside uh, any one time through effectively uh, a little valve system that you have with the whole pressure of the void suit will kind of hold it closed around your mechadendrite if you're careful. Um, are you sure that those mechadendrites are meant for the vacuum of space? Yes, they're fine. They're, okay. they're, they're, they're hardened to environments. Um, as you move in, uh, you notice that the, the strange EM signature you got from the station is weakening. Um, almost to the point where you can still tell it's there because you're looking for it. But it's nowhere near as noticeably strong as it was. I, I would have to ask, what is an EM thingamajig? Consider it the voices of the machine spirits. And you start heading in towards the station. As you get closer, you notice the station looming in front of you. The ship burns until its right angle's on and begins to slide up docking port to docking port. You notice the uh, slightly larger troop transport nearby parked up, seemingly dead, um, no real sign of life. Uh, you can all make perception awareness checks. Okay. Still doing terribly. Um, what is this? What are we okay. Trying to one That's okay. Carolinas and Cassius got her back. And Cassius rolled a two versus twenty-five. Nice. Okay, so yeah, for start, um, Cassius and Carolinas. Uh, you both notice that the entire place looks very deserted, to the point where, like, as you look at windows and stuff, there's no lights on. The troop transport itself, same. It, it seems to be completely and utterly dead. No, no sign of life whatsoever. We can still get the door open, though, just by docking with the ship, yeah. right? Yeah. So you, you dock with the space station... And by powering up the airlock door from your ship, 
you can now open the airlock if you want. Uh, I'm going to effectively say this is a good place to have a break as you are literally yes. the other side of an airlock you can open. Um, you can be equipped with all the goodies you want. Um, and what the hell did you do to my camera, EE? -E? I'm all white now. I'm like a ghost. You're, wait, you're meant to be black. Yes, EE. -E. Oh, okay. Uh, but yeah, this is a good place to have a break. So um, we will be back in like eight minutes. Uh, do go like check out Patreons and stuff, Twitters, subreddits, or you know if you're uh, a member of the Patreon, you can go chat in our Discord server about what you think is going to be happening on the other side of this uh, this fun doorway. Do it. You should. You should indeed. Uh, but we'll be back in like eight minutes. So do stick around or at least come back after the eight minutes are up because we'll be continuing. We'll be finding out what's going on on Space Station Zebra. So, catch you then.
Just an hour of murder porn. That is a good way to come back. Hello, and welcome back to your role Hours of the murder porn. Dark Heresy roleplay show with your favorite YouTubers and streamers. Right, so um, so far this episode, um, our team's been given the order to, apart from the normal heresy at the beginning where Carolinas investigated a book that wanted to talk to him. Uh, well, not talk to him, but uh, had a tongue. They wanted um, to do something to him. Uh, I knew you're into books, but not in that way. Um, Sit on my face, I'm a child. Libra file. I can't help it. They got given a mission to go uh, investigate a research station that had gone dark. Um, they got to the system. Turns out the ship they were meant to be meeting with uh, at the edge of the system to go in with all the conscripts on board had already gone in and docked to the station. Um, and there is no sign of any sort of life as they get up and uh, uh, prepare to enter through the airlock. Well, when, when we docked with the, the station, is there like a way that we could try to hail the, the guardsman transport? Because at this point, it's clear that we're present because we've literally just docked with the thing so well no point what he hiding. said is it looks like it's completely off yeah it's from visual like you can you can you can effectively radio it if you want you're that close like it's completely easy. off including life support or uh you can't really not tell. that much um you could effectively like you could do a more active scan uh, but it's it's very easy to merge the two with the station as far as you can tell, it does appear that like a lot of systems are off, including life support. But you can't really be sh sure. I'd like I'd try. I think sending a quick message, just like status report, okay. and see if anything comes back. You send the word status report question mark. Okay. I guess nothing comes back immediately or anything. <laughs> nothing comes back immediately. <laughs> I'm not hanging around for too long because I imagine the, the, there should be someone posted in a like in the cockpit at all times who would respond. Yeah. So after like a minute, I'm like, yeah, that's not a good sign. No, the ship is that ship is a bit a bit larger than yours. It has uh, enough billets for like uh, probably about hundred troops if it was full capacity. Um, did we dock with the station or did we dock with the transport? Ah, uh, the station. Idea. Station. Unless you wanted otherwise. Idea. We should steal the ship once we go on board and find out that all the guard are dead. We could upgrade. It's free. My it's, recommendation it's to the crew as we're approaching the station is if the if the the transport has the capacity for us to dock with it and board it, then we should. What are you going to do? something I expressed to the rest of the of the of the uh, group as well. It's a good point. Okay. So, do you want to undock from the station and then dock onto the other side of the transport? Effectively, it's got an airlock on both sides. Yeah. Okay, um, so with a clunk sound, the airlock disengages. You move gently over to the other side of the transport. It's going to be a bit awkward because to like dock the two together, you have to like turn 90 degrees. So, you'll have to go through a 90 degree bend in the, in the airlock. Um, so, be careful of that shift in grav plating when you do so. But... It's okay. The, the moment we're outside of the effect of the grab plating, I, I'm like I'm like a fish in the sea. That's assuming that the grab plating is off. Uh, if if it's on on both sides, you will instantly go from walking that way to boing. So caution. I'm sure I'm used to these kinds of. Uh, yeah, you've well. got experience of it. It's it's a very rare situation to do uh, in most sick circumstances, but yeah, it can happen. Um, right, the airlock is ready. Whenever you want to go through. The lieutenant is quite vehement in the fact that him and the crew are going to stay here, unless you say otherwise. And he really wants to stay here. I know. I suggest fact, the lieutenant do not that he... open this door once we're inside, unless you receive direct confirmation from one of us. The safe word is banana. Banana. Phone. I, banana phone. I look a little bit... As good as any other. Can you handle a weapon? He's he likes brings up something from he's been hiding behind his back currently. Now he's really nervous and he's like he's holding effectively a shotgun and he's like Okay, just keep that pointed at the door at all times. Gotcha. You got it. Right, okay. Just to uh, go through what everyone's taking with us. Am I to assume that everyone is now wearing their void suits? Yep. Or not. It's, it's up to you. 
Don't cry to me when we get everyone but Garrett is wearing a void suit. Then, yep. Um, Garrett's spare void suit is being left behind. I look at Garrett and then I say to Carolinas, "How come he doesn't have to wear one?" I look to Cassius, then I look to Garrett, then I look back to Cassius, because I'd care if you didn't make it back. <laughs> I heard that. Fair enough. I wasn't trying to hide it. Are you sure you don't want to wear the void suit? It, you're going in there, and well, that no, doesn't look good. It's okay. Honestly, if there's any kind of nerve agent, he uh, probably couldn't do any more damage to his brain than he's already done to it himself. I mean, I was more worried about decompressed sections and a surprise <laughs> decompression. I, I was including lack of oxygen to the brain as, you know, damage. Brunder also has a rebreather, which he's probably just got, like, around his neck inside the suit at the moment. Okay. Joking aside, Garrett, you really should wear that void suit. But I'm, I'm not, not putting you. that thing on. Very well. It's got a, to be fair, it's got, like, a hole in the helmet. Like, look at it. <laughs> I pointed the spidering cracks all over the It's kind of hard to see spidering cracks helmet. now, as both sides of the void suit have table down them, and there's only, like, a small, <laughs> like, slit at the front. Yeah, he um, tried to make it look like a medieval helmet. I'll just be honest, like, you know, just all it looks a lot more secure, tape. considering it's about half made of tape now. Brenda's going to pick up the the fourth void suit and just carry it with him. Okay. Like, Brenda, in case you change your they mind. Are not, they are not... Very well, you can encumber yourself due to the primitive's lack of self-preservation. But, at any rate... I recommend that we not bring anything too high caliber. Shooting through the hull plating is not recommended in a station. Well, I mean, I'll be honest, looking at that station, unless you're firing something particularly powerful, it's got to stick a hull on this ship. I look pointedly at Garrett when he says firing anything particularly powerful. I, I'm as innocent as can be. I don't know what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. I, 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 we I find have a my... cannon... I assure you, this idiot would think it was a good idea to fire the thing inside there. It would be. If, if we need to fire a cannon, it'd be nice to have a cannon. <laughs> Please don't I, let him I just the macro to him. Please don't let me say, macro cannons. I kind of like having a ship. <laughs> I consider dropping I'm the suit for a second, the idea of but having I'm going to keep it with me. To get away as well. I'm already standing at the at the airlock door. I got my uh, LAS pistol out. There's a big, like, green button, like, glowing currently, waiting for it to be pressed. I'm just looking at the rest of them. You guys ready to go? Let's get this over with. I'm sure we'll be screaming button. and shouting banana soon enough. Okay, for OC reasons, what gear are we all taking? I assume everyone's taking everything you have that is not ridiculous. I'm not taking I'm the, to uh, think, cause like carrying multiple basic weapons, which are basically rifles, yeah. becomes ridiculous pretty quickly. Like effectively um, the questions are, is anyone taking the chain lance, the chain axe, the no. um are you taking your normal LAS rifle in addition to the long LAS? No. I'm okay. taking the, the pistol, the long LAS, and pretty much just that. Okay. No melee weapons. That's fine, yeah. You've got I'm like, taking uh, Oh, go ahead, Brenda. I've got my chain sword and a bunch of pistols. Yeah. My my steadily growing collection of pistols. I have a knife, an auto gun, and my hand cannon. That's the point. We did all get knives, didn't we? Or oh, we just we got a bunch of them. Oh, yeah, I would have brought uh, one of those. Yeah. Um. The, there are three mono knives. Well, two mono knives because I've got one of them. Gashes. L. I love. Taken one of them. Okay. Don't yeah, need I'll weapons. Yeah. Just got I'll my sword. Your sword. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. So you, you got your sword with you, and you step into the airlock. The other side engages. The side behind you closes. It cycles for a minute. The display pattern um, that is quite easily readable, especially for Caroline and Miranda, um, says that there is air on the other side of this door. Damn it! And currently there is gravity. And does it? Sorry, does it let us know open. which direction the gravity is? Uh, yeah, it is ninety degree angle. All right, I'm gonna brace myself like I'm really worried about this thing. 
Okay. It is very disconcerting as you step over the threshold, effectively going from gravity one way to 90 degree sudden shift. Um, and you kind of crouch down in the corner as you go from one to the other. And there's a lurch in your stomach and it feels very disconcerting, but seemingly works. And you look behind you and suddenly see that everyone else is standing horizontal to you. You guys going to come down from there? We got work to do. Get off you the wall. Come up to here. I just move. Okay, you shift over following Garrett. So what do we see here at the uh, entranceway? Uh, so effectively you're into a, a hallway that breaks off um, one direction towards the head of the ship, which seems to be more flight control systems, etc. And the other way towards the rear, which is more billets. And then of course, um, there's stuff like the generators and the um, reactor, uh, the engine, sorry, at the back. What part of the ship has the connection to the uh, station? Uh, directly across from you, actually, you can see it right here. The corridor runs straight through the center of the ship. Um, this ship is very much a transport ship. It's not designed for battle, etc. Um, that way, it is very simple in layout. Uh, like, you couldn't really defend this very easily in a firefight because it runs literally straight through to the other side. You can literally see the other uh, airlock from here. The other airlock, however, is open. I'll just tell everyone the airlock's open so we can access the, sh the station at the moment. Seems like we have air in this ship and in the station. Did you want to check out some of the uh, ship here? Did you want to check the... Oh, what's the front of the ship called? Where all the people do the flying stuff. In the cockpit? The bridge. Yes, I'm the saying bridge, this yeah. aloud, by the way. <laughs> the bridge. Did you want to check out the bridge? I'd advise it. Might as well. That's where we'll find the black box, so... Then I will stay here and keep a watch on the uh, station. Okay, you, you take cover behind uh, part of the bulkhead and uh, ready your long rifle. Oh, yeah. I'll, I'll stay there as well. I'll be no use in the cockpit, probably. Okay. Uh, it, you right probably now, know how to look up you can see very little. The, the most light you can see comes from a few status lights and stuff, which are on, um, giving vague ideas of shapes around you, but your vision is severely limited. I've got my auto gun ready. I'm actually carrying it ready. Um, and I have my optical mechadendrite external to the suit, and I'm using its thermal torch. So I'm looking for any sort of heat signatures, anything like that. Okay. Um, with that, you look around. Uh, no real Basically, heat signatures that you can gather. The, the um, well, the thermal torch, it's actually shining infrared and then receiving it back so it's effectively using a torch that anyone would normalize that no one would be able can, to see uh, yeah a torch that no one yeah. can see yeah. but I would be able to see um, well so it effectively means that I have no darkness for 40 meters okay um, with that effect. you can see down into the space station a little bit um, you see something like turning in the distance like uh, an object of some kind that just seems to have been left and seems to be caught in an area where there's no gravity um uh, sweeping up towards the billet, or, sorry, down towards the billets, down towards the other end of the ship. Um, there are a couple of things um, scattered around the floor, but mostly it looks in fairly decent order down there without having a proper look. And looking up towards the cockpit area itself, um, you can make a perception awareness check. Uh, but in general, perception. it looks fairly neat and orderly. Um, no. yeah. Oh, actually, I can reroll. Yeah, you can. 48, 70. Uh, yeah, you managed to get a, a reading of a couple of fading heat signatures. Um, you would normally, from your me medical experience, expect these to be about the, sort of the temperature of a body that um, someone died approximately about maybe... 24 to 48 hours ago. And that's in the bridge section. Uh, oh, yeah. Did you say? With uh, a note of concern in my voice, I relayed that information. It seems that there's a dead body in the cockpit. I would need to get closer to have a, any real idea on how long ago, but mm, over a day. I can't see anything into the station. Hmm. Cassius, perhaps if you toss your glow 
go down the corridor into the station. That would allow Garrett to remain here on Overwatch while I proceed into the cockpit to have a better look. Or I could stay here, ready to use my stab light to illuminate any foes coming through the corridor. One or the other, but I can't be in both places. I, I hand my glow globe over to Brander, and I say, be careful with it. It was the relic of a god once, and I smirk. I look I, askance I just... at, at Cassius, especially at, at the jovial way he says that. And it's like, a, did he just make a joke about that? Mm-hmm. It's like, and then, then I, 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 I don't linger on it, but it's like proper, like, Really? And then, then I, like, huh? Okay. <laughs> I I give him a look of really, <laughs> and and take it. It's like, come now, grow a sense of humor as I turn on my boot heel. Okay. Um. So, what do you do with the glow globe? Are you holding it, or you did you say you were chucking it down towards the ship to be able to illuminate the the uh, the station? Sorry. Um. Is it all gravity in in that direction? Uh, yeah, as far as there seems to be a small section in the far distance that uh, Karen has pointed out that maybe was out, but other than that, there seems to be gravity all the way down. If we try like, rolling it out, I'm worried it'll make like a huge clattering sound, though. Uh, the glow globe itself is made of plastics, so it might okay. be that loud. I sort of roll it a bit ahead of us to illuminate a little further okay. in. Uh, effectively, you're rolling it all the way until it hits the, the wall in the station so that you can see the T-junction. Yeah. Okay, so... Doof, 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 doof. Doom, doom, boom. It gets to a stop. The, the sound, sound of does reverberate doof, a little doof, bit doof, doof. because of the, uh, it's like, a very quiet station. It. But it's still relatively what is so uh, difficult about rolling. Because it kind of hits like the little lips on like some of the airlocks and stuff and throughout the way. It also goes through a small section of no gravity and goes whoop, boop, 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 boom, 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 boom. Uh, and then it comes to a stop, illuminating the back of the corridor. You can now see that the thing that was caught in the gravity eddy is a data slate, uh, just seemingly left there, um, floating in midair. Uh, yeah, it's how far down? I'm in is some there? some cover it's with about, like pistols uh, trained on the door anyway. Uh, Brandon, why don't you grab that data slate? Oh, the the data slate is only about thirty feet away, so uh, you can go grab the data slate. Oh, that's if you going want. on. I start heading towards the uh, towards the cockpit. Okay. Getting ready. I check. And you're going with Cassius, Cassius aren't you? Yeah. Okay. I assume Cassius is on the way there. Sure. Uh, so you walk towards the uh, cockpit. Brando, are you going to get the date site? Um, are there any like junctions in between me and it, particularly? I suppose uh, I no. could be like attacked. It's, it's effectively from... a, a straight, long um, docking port. Uh, it's a very long spoke going into the main um, structure itself. I'll I'll try quietly making my way up to it and seeing if I can Make grab the thing. <laughs> do I have? I do have stealth. Brandex, yes. Can I just can I just check? Are you wearing jeans at the moment? <laughs> I, just, well, I can't remember what color the the navy like, uniform pants are. I'm not stealthy. As apparently. you step down, your uh, heavy jack boots um, inside the uh, void suit, which has mag boots. Which are you know, pretty heavy in metal. You're not quite used to moving with this much stuff on your foot, especially something so heavy. And there's a clomp, clomp, reverberating sound of foot on metal and rings down throughout the station. Um, well, what does it sound like when uh, Cassius and Carolinas are walking towards the front of the ship? Uh, the the ship itself, as opposed to the docking port, actually has um, uh, some nature of uh, vinyl kind of flooring to it. So it's a lot quieter. Um, it's actually not attached to the main station. Like it's not. It's attached to our docking port, but that does deaden a lot of the sound because there's a seal there. Um, it is noisy, but it's it's not going into the station itself. Um, gotcha. It's still relatively noisy in the ship, but uh, it's not too bad. Uh, you get quietly, to Brander. The data slate. You reach in, and then there's a sudden sensation along your forearm of zero G, which is weird considering you're not in it. I thought you were going to say of something reaching out and grasping <laughs> you at the wrist. You grab the doorway, two D twenty, and um, it seems to be a, a manifest of a receipt of recent cargo. Um, it's already open, perfectly like um, readable, and it seems to list um, a receipt for twenty eight psychers. Twenty eight. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll make my way back to to Garrett and and 
It's micro bead because it's quieter. But uh, this seems to be the manifest for the psychos. It does say 28 rather than 30. I, I it says 28 out of 28. Slightly annoyed. How much? 28 out of 28. They are expecting 28 and they got 28. Khan could have been a bit more specific in his instructions. Is this all on the micro bead? Uh, yeah. Might as well let you hear it as I take up position again in, in some cover. Maybe he thinks rounding up is heresy. I murmur into the micro bead. As you say this, uh, you and Caroline get to the bridge. Before you lie two corpses, um, seemingly the flight crew, um, both of whom are dead and dead for quite a while in uh, the zero G that is now the bridge. Um, as you step through, your magnet's taking over and you're able to clump forwards. Uh, and you get towards their bodies, both of which have been stripped. Um, one completely, the other one just down to the waist. And both uh, people uh, float in midair, globs of blood and uh, viscous matter pressing against your suit as you move forwards and rubbing across the faceplates. As they slowly turn around in midair, um, you note that both of them have incision marks, like someone had tried to... Uh, cut them or flay them or use them as some sort of butchery um the male within the higher ranking sort of um epaulets down the side of his uh, trousers seemingly has his torso skin severed all along the side of the torso across over the belly button and up the other side and then pulled up uh, and sort of floating in front of him like someone would begin uh turning into in is effectively turning into him into a t-shirt um the ribs and the muscle all around the torso and the stomach are all perfectly exposed. Uh, I need you and Carolinas to make fear checks, but since it's fairly mundane here, with a plus 20. I was well, going to say, we uh, face down uh, gene stealers. Are we afraid uh, afraid of the gore of what we're seeing? Because, I mean, I'm with yeah. Carolinas and this sort of stuff. Do you it have does this sort of stuff to people. Do you have jaded? No, I no. don't. Then you are still afraid. Uh, Jaded okay. is the talent that makes you uh, immune to mundane fear. Um, okay. So, what was our modifier? Plus twenty. I'm just saying that as a med medical person, it's like uh, if I'm gonna edge it. That's fine. Uh, but yeah. What was it? I guess it's different to see this in a non-medical context, maybe. Um, no, okay. It's it's a fear check with plus twenty. It's effectively it's how mundane fear works. So that's willpower plus twenty. Yes. Right? Uh, so. Let me see what's the nope. failures. Um, I'll re-roll it. Cassius fails two degrees. You choose to re-roll. Uh, I faded it, and then I succeeded the second time. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, sorry, I see. Yeah, I see the re-roll. Um, so you succeed, and 41. you succeed. Both of you feel a little bit off about seeing people so utterly brutalized. Um, and as the other body turns around, you notice that this one has marks like someone was doing something similar but they didn't manage to get anywhere near as far as the previous one. However, this one is okay. missing one eye. It seems that someone has taken a very sharp blade, cut around the orbital, and then popped it out. The other one shows marks of something similar having begun. The eyelid is uh, almost severed along one side, uh, but um, not completed. The hollow eye socket gazing strangely back at you. Um, just a quick uh, OC law question. Mm-hmm. Do biometrics exist? Uh, biometrics yes, depending on the thing. world, depending on the person, etc. Um, in general, uh, battle fleets and Imperial Guard don't tend to tag, but some uh, depends different regiments, etc. Do. Yeah. So would it? Because the first thought that came to my mind, and I'm trying to ascertain whether it would be a thought that would come to Carolinas, is in the law, um, is would someone remove an eye so that they could pass security checks? Uh, yes, they could do that. Oh, okay. Okay, well, the first thing I do is once I've taken a, a, a steadying breath at the sight of these things, I immediately look around the rest of the room. It's very easy to be distracted by something like that. Make a so uh, scrutiny check. Is 
This would be an intelligence scrutiny because you're doing an investigation. Um, uh, scrutiny doesn't have that. It's only got perception uh, or perception. fellowship. Sorry, perception then. Okay. Uh, I'll re-roll that then. Okay. I've got 61 versus 30. No. And a 58 versus 30, so no. No. Um, seemingly nothing's really disturbed in here. Uh, a lot of stuff, you know, in zero-g is floating around a little bit, but mm, nothing particularly uh, amok, other than the fact that there is uh, blood floating and someone's skin almost severed from the torso. I'm going to look around for the flight recorder. Yeah, okay. You, you quickly find it. It's a pretty obvious place in here. Um, and you manage to pull it up from below the deck plating. It takes you about 10 minutes, um, but you do manage to just about... Um, get it out from its uh, cubby hole. While that's happening, Branda Garrett. Yes. You're watching down the hallway, glow globe, nicely illuminating it, and there is a <laughs> and the glow globe <laughs> goes down. Oh, you guys murdered my light source. The only one I Immediately, had. Immediately, Michael bead, the light just went out. Immediately as I hear that, I turn, and I start creeping forward again, using my uh, thermal torch to see if there's anything in that corridor. As I start creeping towards them, and I, I micro be on my way. Okay, um, make a awareness check. Uh, Branda Garrett, Ooh. you can make an awareness check at minus 30. Am I making it too? Uh, are you still I'll up there, or are you coming up? down as well? I'm st I've, if I've got the flight recorder removed, then I'll go with him. But if I'm still working on that, I want to keep working on it. Okay, yeah, you've got seven quarters, Target so. one. Okay, so I'll go down there. Um, such a good roll as well. Yeah, you go down there, lugging the flight good. recorder behind you. There's no way I can re-roll that. If anyone's going to re-roll, it's got to be to catch anything. All that you I'll re-roll it again. Okay. I'll use a fate for this one. Okay. I'll re-roll the, the entire test, since it seems like it might be important. But you can't re-roll the entire test. You can re-roll one of the die. No, yeah, I can re-roll yeah, one okay. of the die. 27 um, out of 70. You very briefly uh, get a return on your, um, effectively, the, the sonar element of your um, auger ray. Effectively, the, the thing looking for um, sound in certain spectrums that's, you know, okay. odd, anomalous, etc. And it sounds like very, very light, but very rapid footfalls. And they get quieter very quickly. Can I? Someone just ran from me. Sounded. I can't. Do I get any idea of the weight of the footfalls? Uh, the period between them? Fast. Someone like. Rapidly tap dancing away. Um, but maybe the person was like a child or something. The weight behind them didn't f sound very heavy. Mm. Okay. It squats, we're all doomed. They mostly come out at night. Mostly. mostly. I relay that, this information to both Branda and um, Garrett. As I, as I imagine at this point, I've arrived at where they're um, overwatching. And I just crouch. Yeah, how by how good is the light? Because you said it's like 50 feet away. Uh, Carolinas can see 40 feet away. None of you can. Because he can, he's the only one who can see in the infrared spectrum. Gotcha. And only with this uh, light mechadendrite. So he has to point it where he's looking to be able to really get a sense of what's going on. Because he can see through the mechadendrite, not his eyes in the infrared spectrum. And then he can sort of match that up. If anyone wants, like, you know, enhanced senses, just say the word. I would happily cut out your eyes and put better things in, say. You just want to feed him to your book. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to give your book eyes. Yeah, but he. We don't know. About <laughs> Googly eyes on the front of it. We don't know about the book. No, that's that's that that would be our replacement. Over eyes your comlink, Googly you get. Eyes. Hey, what was that? I heard was the sound of something to what we... fizzing or shorting out. Is everything okay over there? We're all right. We had a a glow globe, but something put it out. Something. Probably a malfunction. I say through the comlink. Okay, good. I'm looking into it now. We'll advise if there's any problem. I'm trying to keep my eyes down the corridor, but I'm sort of side glancing at Carolinas. Any chance we could get some lighting in here? 
I could illuminate the corridor for you, but that would just as quickly make us visible to whatever might be down there. I'll light it up if I see anything. You can have uh, a word on that. Mechanics note, it would also ruin your dark vision. You'd be able to see in one direction, but your view in any other direction yeah. would then be even more negative. On the microbead, Cassius, any progress on the bridge? Yes, I've got the flight recorder. Shall I return? Is there anything else of note up there? Any data slates? Anything else you can see in the, in the bridge section? If you need more uh, time, I can send. I can replace Brander here. He can come up and help. I'll, I'll take my proper time and look around. Uh, e, is there a way for me to just look around? You know, like in D and D, you can take twenty. You know what I mean? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Like, like you can take like tests. ten minutes uh, looking around. Um, a lot of the stuff on the bridge is fairly orderly laid out, like you would normally expect in a, an environment of this kind. And we have a few instructions from Brand of where to look and you know what to look through. Um, you manage to collate a few things, and you manage to find uh, between the um, uh, the black box and the captain's log that's available. Uh, I would like you to make me a. Um, a simple intelligence check at plus 30. It's not particularly hard. I'm still going to fail my intelligence. Dumpster! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, you won't fail. Uh, mm. There you go. See? 92. 92. You failed with that you roll are anyway. really confused. You, you're just, this data site, you're not exactly sure how, how it works. You keep like, and the volume goes up, and then you like press on a button, the brightness goes down. <laughs> it starts playing the officer's MP3s like, shit! Turn off! Do -do, do -do 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 -do. Sorry. It's, yeah. Um, like, you do take it I back to Branda. Branda can make an intelligence check if you want. It won't be much better, but I'll give it a shot. But because it's, again, Imperial Navy, you get another plus 10, and it doesn't matter, you roll a 12. Uh, you quite easily just okay. tap in a few runes and stuff. It, this is a very simple, like, basic ship's log layout for a data slate <laughs> kept on any I, one I love, I love of any Imperial like, Navy You can't ship. make head or tail of this archaic arcane voodoo device <laughs> and i was like yeah brander th this is so this is like the my to be fair the file structure like, might have been a bit different to like what cash has experienced but Branda knows this is a very set file structure and uh you look through it and you've got an entire ship's log there and with that you've also got access to the black box um with the intelligence check you managed to put through an order of events um the order of events is captain's log uh we've re appeared in system um, it looks like the ship we're meant to, uh, meet with seems to be already there, and as per instructions, we are going to, uh, dock with the station. No radio contact as yet, but mm, there is a lot of interference coming from some sort of anomaly on the station, and that possibly could be affecting their comms. And then there's a later one. Okay, we're just docking now. The troops are ready to disembark. Still no radio contact, but we'll be able to hopefully, uh, get contact with them soon. And then, that's it. I don't wish Do I have to relay me. this to him, or, or are they all, like, listening to it? That's up to you. You're the one with the microbead. Uh, okay, well, I'll say, it seems that he mistook something for our ship. Possibly the thing that we were seeing before. And took it upon himself to dock without actually checking. Uh, what was going on? Hmm. Uh, there's no nothing since the docking. If it killed 50 guardsmen, my suggestion is that we get back to the ship and we leave. It's already killed 50 men. At least we have to assume so, because you would assume that we would see some heat signature or some sign from that many human beings in one space. If they're gone now, it's more than capable of killing the four of us. Looking ar around this trans, other than the the two people on the bridge who've been, you know, butchered, is there any sign of blood, anything at all? Not from what you have seen. Um, you've already rolled effectively awareness tests where you currently stand, uh, and no, not that not that you've seen. Okay. And report what exactly, Cassius? That we came here, we found the guards who, let's be perfectly honest, were sent here to die anyway. 
we found them dead before we arrived. And so we immediately took flight without knowing what's here or what to report to the interrogator. I know you don't like the man, neither do I, but I can't imagine that going particularly well. At the very least, I suggest we try to find that ship that was posing as our own. I'm not sure of the competence of this officer. It may not have been posing at all. All of you are quiet for a second, and then there's a very faint sound, like a, a distorted hum. Um, everybody make perception checks. Modifiers? Uh, it'd be awareness checks. Awareness officer. Um, Carolinas and Brandon both get plus tens because of their backgrounds. Ooh. Me roll good. Me roll good. Okay, so uh, Carolinas, Cassius, and Branda. Everyone but Branda. Branda seemingly oblivious, which makes sense because of his background. Oh, I, I got no, it. No, no, Garrett was the one. Oh, sorry, I uh, meant Garrett. Uh, Garrett, uh, which makes sense because of his background. Everyone else. You suddenly hear a very faint sound of what sounds like an energy weapon uh, powering up. Um, a very, very large energy weapon as you hear the sound of what is effectively the pre-beam as it starts to fizzle against metal. Which gives you just enough time. I want to take as much cover as I can. Yeah, I start backing away from the door and around the nearest corner. Uh, which door? You're effectively <laughs> actually... in a crossroads right now. There's the airlock towards the station. There's the airlock behind you, which is closed. There's towards the bridge, and there's towards the, the bedding and the billets. I actually head into the station, and I shout out for the rest of it. It's not going to shoot at itself. That's the only warning they're going to get Everyone else me. apparently is just frozen in horror. But as Caroline I just runs... jump for whatever is nearest, really. Okay, you, you jump behind the corner nearby. Um... And Carolinas legs it up the hallway, which isn't particularly fast for Carolinas, um, but it's a fair few meters. There's a sound of a... Which is a sound of effectively suddenly metal being super boiled. Uh, shockwaves are sent out by the speed at which metal boils behind what is a lance blast. Um, seemingly. Uh, you can't really get a good angle on where this is. And then there's a sound of ripping metal as the airlock behind you shears and something twists. The entire troop transport lurches to the side as whatever is attached to it, presumably your ship, is obliterated. Damn this it. Thin docking port which connects um, the station to the troop transport bends slightly. Carolinus, uh, you're the one in there. I need to make a agility check with a plus 10 modifier or be not prone. Everyone else, you are all not prone. There is no way you're avoiding this. Our credit rating is going to be hosed uh, after this. I'm not prone. 77. There's just no There's way. 20. Yeah. Uh, so you're all not prone. Um, at this point, I am taking you into effectively a, it's not combat time, but it's a fast narrative time. I need to call your actions, I'll be telling you what's happening, and the longer you wait, bad things are going to happen. As you sort of begin to all get yourselves up, the gravity in the troop transport fails. All three of you in the troop transport suddenly start floating in midair. Troop transport twists more as its momentum carries it round. The docking section that attaches to the station twists into a slight spiral. It's now about 30 degrees out. Caroline, so you still have gravity. Okay. I get onto my... I get up to, like, a crouch. So one okay. foot, one knee. And without looking back, you instead using my optimal call macadendrite, I imagine Branda or Garrett were right next to the airlock. I literally extend it out and try to hook it around their arm and pull them... They're in zero G, so I don't need to put much effort in okay. it and just pull them towards the gravity of the... Sure. Uh, of the... You can pull one person and two other people have to make tests. Okay. Um, who is within reach? Uh, probably uh, Branda, because Branda sort of jumped towards cover. Okay. Um, okay so then you I grab, grab Branda. Branda's arm. And no and need for a test. Just, just Branda. Poof. You go into gravity and then suddenly skid face like first onto the floor uh, and get up. Um, Garrett, Cassius, you are now in zero G. Um, what are you going to do? I guess I'm going to try and push off of something towards um, Carolinas. 
Okay, uh, make uh, an agility check. There isn't a check for, yeah. there isn't a skill for any zero G, is there? No, acrobatics maybe. <laughs> this is gonna be bad. No, I think Voidborn yeah, does get plus ten. Yeah, yeah, the acrobatics. Um, yeah, uh, you kind of flop around in midair a little bit, Cassius. Uh, not really able to get a, a handle onto anything proper to push us. <laughs> Garrett, however, acrobatics, that. and he sort of does a, like a backflip in midair, pushes off, and sails forwards before getting into gravity and <laughs> face planting onto the ground. You did a but backflip on, somewhat, on like one degree of success? Somewhat, nah. somewhat holding his own, um, only sort of skids onto his shoulder and rolls up. Uh, Cassius, however, is still in the ship. Hey, at what this happened point, to our mag boots? Do those just you can not turn exist them back anymore? on. They they aren't oh, turned okay. on by turn general. Always they drain the battery. Because I didn't turn them on when we went into the into the okay, bridge. Okay, reaction. You turn your mag boots on and you're now stuck to the wall nearby. Speaking of, have I kept hold of Garrett's suit? Uh, yeah, like yeah, I see it was basically strapped right. to you. Or Are we venting you. atmosphere right now through that airlock? Uh, the airlock itself because... is still closed because the door is part of the ship. However, okay. you can assume that the twisting metal probably has started to vent air. Um, you can use your, your mechadendrite to scan as a half action to check if the air levels have dropped notably. Uh, when they've dropped enough, your suit will tell you. Okay. Um, no, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna check it. I'm. I'm preparing my gun, and I am currently watching okay. down this corridor. My the ship optical mechadendrite having helped. Brander is now facing in that direction so I can sort see. of gets its maximum extension and there's a as it sort of reaches the most it can turn and then begins to spin the other way as the tension built up in the very steel um, of the, the gangway itself begins to twist it the other way um, Cassius you're still caught out there but you're now locked onto the side what are you doing I'm getting onto whatever designated floor Carolinas is on okay and uh, I'm if moving you want towards to walk, it you can walk, but it will take time. Walking mag boots is a very slow process, or you can attempt to push off, turn the magnets off at the right time, and sail through the air. It's a lot easier. Yeah, to that's test. not going to happen. I'm going to walk it. Okay. <laughs> My agility is like, it's minimum, it's the lowest it could possibly be, so. Everyone else, what are you doing? While Cassius is doing that, I'm literally where I tugged Brander and he face planted once gravity had hold of him. I've reached down with my with one arm and I took him by the like the foot the upper arm and I've tried to help him up onto into a crouch. And I'm just kind of orientating him because I know he's effectively blind right now. Orientating him in the right direction. Keep moving, and I'm creeping forward in a crouch. And as soon as he's up, I've, I've got my hands on my gun. Is there a way again. because a lot when I go through the door towards them, spaceships always have ceiling bulkheads for emergencies when there's breaches. Is there anything like that as I come through the door where I can seal it behind me? Yeah, if you go through the airlock into the like the gangway into the station itself, uh, you yeah. can try and shut that. However, there is no power. Um, Wouldn't they have a manual thing you could? There pull? would be a manual yeah, thing. Yeah, that seems like a. You would have to crank the manual thing slowly. Like to crank an entire bulkhead will take many revolutions and a couple of strength attacks. Um, alternatively, there are things that people can do to try and power things temporarily, but I don't think Carolinas has that implant. I don't Talked know. about it. Oops. Doesn't have it. No. Where are we headed, by the way? I, I never even figured that out. Into the station so far. <laughs> Into one of oh, the outer god. corridors. Oh god. Well, I'm gonna switch. I'm gonna put the la put the las rifle away and pull out my las guns. Probably better okay. for corridors. Uh, do you guys just sprint down there as fast as you can, or are you waiting for Cassius? No, I, I'm <laughs> creeping forward. I am effectively waiting for Cassius. Not moving okay. too far ahead, but making progress. And I'm trying to steer those who are not as as capable of seeing. Just making sure they I'll be ready with basically. weapons facing into the station. Okay. Also, I'm going to micro beat to Garrett. Are you sure you don't want to put your damn suit on? It's way too late now. T putting on a full suit and checking <laughs> it sealed will take uh, easily in excess of a minute, and normally it will take about five to ten minutes. L I, I literally, when, when, he, where when he micro beats are. that... Sorry, what was that, Brandon? I just dropped the suit where I am, whatever... It was strapped to your back. You weren't really holding it. Yeah, I kind of imagine it well, I mean, just it, like I, I undo the straps and let it okay. drop. It falls in front of Garrett. Step on it and keep walking down the okay. corridor. You step on it. Uh, it goes into one of the gravity eddies where one of the plates has stopped working and starts floating up. Um, Cassius, you are a good deal behind them, but you finally get to the edge of where the, uh, the gravity is off in the troop transport, and you're actually into the airlock proper and beginning to get up the gangway. Um... 
Everyone do else. See anything at all in the station? Yeah, you can see a very minimal amount of stuff, mostly like lit by stars from outside. It's still. There's no like emergency light. Oh, there are emergency lights. They just aren't on. Okay. Uh, which is peculiar because they normally come on emergencies, as the name would imply. Um, as you run up there, Go you notice figure. Cassius really far behind you, and the troop transport spins around and gets to where it probably should stop, and the entire um, gantry way begins arcing to the side, and this time it doesn't seem to be stopping. It bends, and there's a slight tearing and bulking of the metal in the center where uh, Caroline's Brander and Garrett were standing only about 10 seconds before. Cash is still fairly far away at this point. At the sound of the of the metal, I turn around. Um, I turn on the, my stab light at this point, illuminating literally where I am, like look down at the floor, and I just call out to Cash, just run, you fool! Cash I run. is slow running, but he tries his best. Garrett, um, you suddenly feel your ears pop. Oh. I think we're losing pressure, boys. Is my you suit reporting anything? Uh, yeah, your suit is now reporting there is a dramatic uh, drop in pressure. You've already lost um, about 0.1 atmosphere. Garrett, start running. Start running now. Don't stop running. Running! Where am I okay. running? Uh, what's your max run? I can't show him. He can run faster than all of us put together, basically. Yeah, you can vaguely see rough directions. Um, running, you might walk into a bulkhead if you're too fast, but uh, I think that's the least your worries right now. What's your run? 30. 30, okay. You, you leg it down that corridor. Uh, and quite quickly, because your run is so massive, um, make a perception check at minus... Uh, just a, a normal awareness check. <laughs> I'm going to be so... So amused, we run straight into the wall. <laughs> Bonk! Uh, 97. Oh, yeah. You leg it down there. You have never moved so fast as you, like, look behind you and you glance and you see the metal tearing and doof, doof, doof. it starts, like, entire, like, tiles start popping off where rivets are just being sheared. And you, you just quickly turn forwards at the last minute to poof. You run full pelt into a wall. Um, I will roll damage for the wall. That's fantastic. Good mm -hmm. old reliable Garrett. And the microbee just hears a whole bunch of cussing. I like to I'm imagine sure the like the guy speaking. in the mummy when he's got the scarabs in him, he just takes off uh, and runs into the wall. What's your armor like, and what's your toughness? Speed. Armor is eight. Toughness is. Uh, that's combined. Uh, eight, your oh, armor is not eight. Okay. It's, your armor is five. Okay, it's five. Five armor and toughness. Three. I say, yeah. where did he get power armor? Yeah, you take <laughs> one point of uh, impact damage to your face. <laughs> Not that it matters, it's just one point of impact damage. Not my face! Not my that face. it matters! Harsh words <laughs> from the GM there. Basically, no, you like turn anything. forwards and you smack it straight forwards with your nose and your lip. Your nose crunches slightly to the side and you feel something maybe break oh, and so, your so lip you splits. So, so Brander's got an easy trail to follow. I'm just dripping blood everywhere now. We're good. Yeah, um... Meanwhile, Cassius, uh... Make me a... Make me an agility check. Would he have try any it. any advantage because he's going to be able to see the warping metal now, not just be blind to it? Uh, this is just s speed. Uh, it's, it's not okay. um, detecting anything. He's still slow behind. So he's just trying to keep his balance as the metal bulks. Several of the grav plates just flicker out. Some of them just start sending weird eddies and higher and lower gravity. And it's very hard making your way up there now. You're very much caught behind the curb and it's becoming much, much harder. I'm going to move towards Cassius and try to reach out to, to help him. Okay, uh, you put yourself in slightly more harm's way. Make a a strength check with your Mechadendrite to be able to grab him. Uh, this is where one of the Mechadendrite manipulators would come in helpful, but uh, sadly... Alas. Uh, that said, you just oh, 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 look at that! You managed to get your a... mechadendrite like looped around him. The light is just playing all over the place now. And you yank him forwards. Your maga boots holding just about on the floor. And he comes over to you. Uh, you're now both behind the area where it's starting to bulk. And metal's breaking. Uh, Garrett, you are completely in the airlock. Brandy, you make it just up to where Garrett is. Uh, Garrett, you feel your eyes begin to hurt. And... Cover my eyes. 
Hurry up, boys. Explosively decompressed. We gotta go. We gotta uh, go. Carolinas, the atmosphere is now down to about 0.8, and the rate at which it's decreasing is decreasing much, much faster. Make an intelligence check with plus 20 because of your background, because it's a fairly easy one. Zero eight. Eight by nice. sixty two. You are almost certain that you will not make it to the airlock in time before you uh before the air decompresses here. You think you'll be fine because you're wearing void suits. And because yep. I immediately bead. Once brand is through, close the airlock. That, and I, I, I start moving in that direction but i'm mindful of what i'm moving across now because i'm not rushing because i don't think i'm going to get there in time so i'm picking the safest route and, and things that i'm going to be able to hold on to once everything fails okay i've got things one hand over my eyes and i've got me. one hand ready to smack that red button next to the airlock Brander Brander is in through the door yeah, I'm... i've smacked the button then The emergency power reserves for this uh, airlock, which are there in case of an emergency. Effectively, it's a compressed gas and explosive bolt. Um, it's part of the security measures. The only way to reopen that is with the manual release now. Uh, this is effectively. I'm trying to guide. Cassius okay. at this point. Because you said you immediately grab the, um, the things you think are sturdy, etc., and you have a background in Voidborn, you quickly find one of the support beams that looks like it's not bulking away. It looks like it's still attached to the station. You grab hold of that. You're just beyond the main tear point in the uh, gantry way, and as you grab hold, there's a... And a sound of ripping, tearing metal, which is a very weird sound. The sheer force is involved metal it might as well be spaghetti things tear and warp inch thick plates of steel are just like a vionetta roll as they worm up and are just torn asunder the entire gantry splits in half and you're left holding on to the end of a support beam surrounded by sheared rivets floating bits of cable whipping around as the troop transport slowly drifts away very slowly but the size of that and the sheer forces involved, metal has been turned into plywood. Uh, it, more than that, wet paper might as well be. You're there, holding on to Cassius, and with your other hand, holding on to a support beam. You and I'm microbeating as, as, as quickly as possible, telling him, door's shut, this ain't opening again, are you guys okay? I'm taking stock of Cassius at the moment because Cassius hasn't said anything. I'm just basically clinging to him and clinging to the... Gravity's gone now, I assume. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's no gravity. <laughs> Oddly, so I, I seem slightly comforted. So am I with Garrett? Yeah. Did I make it through? Yeah, okay. Yeah, there's I a, there's a my plexiglass for now. slot and you can just see what's going on. For comfort's sake. So I'm not floating anymore. Okay. As soon as I can see that the two of them are all right, I turn around and, and check in the other direction, see if there's anything there. Are we in an airlock now, or is this like, or is the gantryway bit the airlock? Uh, the airlock itself, there's an airlock at one end of the gantryway, and there's an airlock, an internal airlock, just in case. The gantryway is effectively a very thin, like, offshoot. Um, they do occasionally get bumped and stuff, so there's there's a backup airlock just in case. You wouldn't want to accidentally vacate an entire space station. Um, so are we, like, outside in the void right now, or are we just, are like, outside, in a... Just no, you are fully void. outside in the void, holding on to a spar of metal outside of a space station. Okay, so I beat the captain. I say, Captain, we're going to need a pickup through your airlock. It's not going to be fun or pleasant, but it needs to happen. As he tries to do that, I remember... Who do you think you're talking to, Cassius? They weren't right, shooting That's true, the they were attached to the ship, that's they right. They shot the ship that we arrived on. As you look and behind you, you see... I to guide his feet onto something. Yeah, uh, you managed to just do like, get one foot onto the beam and with a... The, the yeah, I forgot mag... that we reattached to the to the yeah. other thing. Um, the mag boot connects. Uh, looking behind you, you see the remnants of your old ship in the far distance, helped with the op optical mechadendrite, um, being able to scan in infrared. You can just about see that most of the front section is melted, twisted, and sheared off. The rear section seems relatively intact, and you can actually see Sky Beast 
rolling outside of it as it flops away through the void, having come three and gone through the hangar doors. Go for it. Get it, it still seems relatively intact ish. I mean, I can see this because of the telescope scoping site. Yeah, uh, telescope. Uh, is that, okay. That's Go for cool. the beast. Believe in the beast. How far away is it? It's pretty far away. Um, yeah. Effectively, <clears throat> if you were to try and actually get to it, you would be jumping into the void and it would be a very hard test. You don't have a way of controlling your momentum. <clears throat> That's fine. I've got Cassius. I can throw him away. <laughs> <laughs> Reaction mass. <laughs> <laughs> Just be aware there may be several bolts of lightning coming your way as you fly off into the distance. <laughs> does, that even go, does that even go? And we're right your, next to a warp storm. Suit? I assume those are going to do a lot of damage out here. Yeah, or the warp storm might reach out and just fry you. I mean, I'm floating in the storm. void anyways. I mean, how much worse can it get? <laughs> just can't see some any, any telekinesis yet. Can Cassie just right. be like, just like? Yeah, are we, are we like gaining superpowers just by being this close to the void storm? Is this is this bad? Is this good? Telekinesis, it wouldn't work in this situation because telekinesis is really, really nerfed as far as dark heresy goes. Like you can only move like, I think per psi rating, it's like one kilogram per psi rating, and it moves super slow. Zero G right, though, you'll moments, you'll get there eventually. Once I I can I can I can't hear it. As mm -hmm. much as I feel the vibration through the metal I'm holding on to, the Cassius is his magwoods have effectively docked with the metal. Yeah. I turn the stab light off and I go back to using the thermal torch okay. alone. And I microbeat Cassius, you haven't said anything. Are you alright? Are you are you shocked? Are you are you wounded? I'm fine. I'm just deep in contemplation about how far up shit creek we are. <laughs> what can you guys see out there? A lot of space. Don't worry about us for now, Garrett. Worry about yourselves. You have no light source. Unless you do, in which case I recommend you use it. But be aware that whatever just did this destroyed the glow globe that was just there, where you are right now. Be mindful of the dangers out there. We'll make our own way to you. If you see anything, my advice is shoot it. If I could send you an emoji of a smile like we did in Shadowrun, I would have. <laughs> Sadly, the funny so guys have not invented emoji. So you guys, so you guys aren't telling us the Sky Beast may be intact. Okay, that's good. Don't I get our hopes up. No. That's good. It's good. Um, no. Branda, Garrett, you are in a T junction. Do you want to one one person face each way? Uh, I'm just gonna look oh, everywhere. I mean, I'm not gonna. I don't think we should stand back to back and stand still. I think we gotta go towards the source of of that whatever it was that shot our ship. Are you? So is there a little like? I'm too sure. Is there a little airlock? Hmm? Is there a little airlock compartment then, so that I could like send Garrett through and then let the other guys in? Uh, yeah. If you want to be in the airlock compartment, yeah, sure. Is it all right, Garrett? If you stay here, then I can bring the other guys through, and I'm, I'm beating this so they can hear. Don't I worry about us. I, I, I can operate the airlock from the outside. It's going to be on a manual crank if you just use the emergency power. All right. Well, it shuts the, the other door, and then you can try coming in. Fine. But don't leave him on his own. Don't either of you be on your own right now. We Bloody don't know system. how many hostiles there are or what they're armed with, whether they can see you or not. Uh, so, yeah. Be safe. Carolinas and Cassius, you're moving up towards the door. Okay. Yeah. And on the way, the yeah. every couple of steps, I just remind Cassius, yeah, these void suits, not a bad idea, were they? Yeah, yeah, whose idea was that? Who didn't want to wear the void suits? <laughs> Who told you that would be a bad idea? <laughs> was it a bad idea? Yeah, it was a bad idea. You're very lucky to have such a studious... Me mouthy Melvin when you're right, don't you? I say as my mag boots go clung, clung. Before I met you, I used to eat lavish meals. Bed exotic women. Have and my because every of whim, me, you might yet live to do that again. My every whim thank was you, my, to. Thank you, in order. And now you, I'm stuck to the ass end of a space derelict. You get to the door, out. and you have to start <laughs> cranking the handle. You have to crank this handle a lot of times. And in zero G, that's pretty hard to do. And with your strengths, it's going to take a little while. Um, so you can continue bitching as you slowly crank this handle what, around What is and around. your strength? Cash Meanwhile, what do we see in 30. here? Is there anything we can see here? You said we could lit, a little bit lit by starlight. What do we see? A little bit. Uh, make a awareness check at minus 20. 
If I ever uh, find 30, out about 20, that book, 20. I'm never going to let you hear the end of it. <laughs> now I know exactly how the land lays. I did it wrong, but it doesn't matter. I failed it. Okay. Uh, failed by miles. Yeah, you both failed by quite a few degrees. Um, you can just see that both go off in um, both directions. You're not too sure what lays particularly far. It's pretty dark and hard to see. Um, however, there is a... I need it's got to be a something. shuriken thrower. It has to be. That's what the sound is to me. That's what I always think when I think shuriken throws a little... <laughs> like that little noise. Well, they're about to get killed. We, 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 <laughs> it's okay. You keep like, cranking that thing. We're like bitching each other. It's all good. Just bitching each other out. We're just like having to crawl through a sewer system is, or something like is that. Is there like, no light oh provided by having like a, an energy weapon? Can I just fire some of those target shots that you were talking about? They aren't really designed for that. They're very, very low light. Yeah. They're very pinpoint. Um, like, it's effectively, is it a laser? It's not really going to illuminate much. Um, can I find, like, a piece of metal I can shoot a little bit to warm it up so it glows? Yeah, no. Come on, I got to do something. That would actually work. You would need to use a lot of shots. And I don't know what you'd be okay, holding got... it with because it would be very hot to glow. If you want it to glow in the visible spectrum, it would be very hot. I'm looking around for like little control panels and stuff. Any um, like in case there's somewhere where there's like an activate emergency lighting button. <laughs> it's it's a solve all my problems button, conveniently placed. Uh, <laughs> How are you right? Saying? You are hit. Oh dear. In the leg, Garrett. Damn! Can't dodge this because I can't see it. Nope, you are completely unaware that you're being attacked. Um, Left leg. And let me just check what the damage is. Nine points of rending damage. With a penetration of three. So, not, so instead of eight, it's five. So four damage. Uh, yes. Um, as something shoots into your leg penetrating it and sending pain incredibly strong amounts of pain through your leg as it feels like uh deep bits of muscle have been torn apart i need to make a toughness test at minus 20. oh the hell oh no <laughs> this mission is not looking i told you guys we should leave then again we'd probably be dead then too i think we're dead either way on this one uh in <laughs> addition you take oh no 71 plus 10 for those who are just listening to this on mp3. Yeah, minus 20 on the toughness. You My take goodness. another 8 points of damage. Woo! Ah! What? Not reduced by toughness or by armor. Good ah! lord. As pain okay. courses through your system and you're sent into spasms as your leg just so much pain goes through you right now. Well, that's uh, 1 on the critical damage. 1 on the critical damage to the leg. Uh, kind of glad we're not inside right now. Maybe we should stop cranking. You get hit once, you're already in crit damage. Yay. I, I'm not going to lie. The moment he starts going into his microbeat. I think Carolinas might th might be con contemplating. Uh, I'm just going to kick off and take my chances with reaching the Sky Beast. I can use I I've got an auto gun. I can just keep shooting in the direction opposite to the one I want to be traveling in. It'll be how fine. Much, how much morphine do you have in that medical mechadendrite? Because we could have some fun on our way out. I mean, <laughs> you suffer there's one no level need to fatigue. go out unmedicated. <laughs> one level fatigue? Okay. As the pain courses can through I your leg. Can I tell what direction it came from? Make uh, an awareness check at just a flat awareness check. Effectively, I'll give you a plus 20 on the minus 20, so it's flatting. Nope. 71 under 31. So I can't even tell, because I'm thinking I'm just going to, like, fire down the corridor and hope I hit something. Uh, yeah, you can do that. If you've got a full auto weapon, you can do suppressing fire. You can't can really do, I do it, it in both it. directions at once with the two pistols I have. <laughs> can I do it in both directions? You know what? Ah! You can fire down there. You might hit something if you roll really well. It... Oh, we oh, just oh, lost uh -oh, that. Uh-oh, uh -oh, okay. I, I let go for just a second, and he just started drifting away. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my oh, my God. And my boots failed. It's also ruined where all the it's cameras are. I'm going to be back in a second. Long. That rip in his suit was the end of him. Uh, so, yeah, Brenda, I... Really good uh, one. I gave him that one. 
if you if you all the cameras are so screwed up i hope you'll join us again just because the cameras not because we need him um Brenda, uh, yeah, if you want to make some shots, you can shoot down both directions if you want. It'll be really, really hard. So effectively, just roll me two ballistics. Don't even, like, add any modifiers. All right. Ballistic one, ballistic two. I love how Brenda and, and Shen are perfectly <laughs> fine, but I'm now just all messed up. I'll lean more this way. Yeah. Target for both was 41, got a 66, and a 41. I'm currently Spartacan. That wasn't the target. <laughs> now I'm currently Avak. That was Yay! not the target. I'm playing both roles. If 41 wasn't the target? No. I thought you said flat. Yeah, uh, as in, they just roll me a normal ballistic skill. Like, there isn't actually any modifiers because you would have had to roll, like, really, really, really low because you were firing blind. Um, effectively. But I succeeded. No, to succeed, you would need a 0, 1 to a 0, 5. Oh. But I didn't, no, I didn't, I I didn't do any modifiers on the ballistic skill test. It was yeah, zero. You literally need to be really, really lucky. Effectively, you need to roll okay. zero, one to zero, five. You have a 5% chance of hitting because you have no idea where they are and you're just firing blind. Um, As Splat, I'm calling out your bullshit. You're a horrible GM. As Avak, however, I think you're doing a great job. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Avak can live. Um, just yes. a heads up. Just a heads up. Splat says his internet is off. So he's Skyping on his phone. Sorry. Oh. Okay, well, hopefully his router will come back online in like a minute or two, because it could just be a router issue. Um, tell him to reboot or something. Either way, he's outside the airlock, so we can continue for the moment. Um, Branda, you are hit in the right arm. Uh, How much? Four. Seven pen three. All right. Threes cancel. Well, yeah, the the penetration goes through my armor, then take off four for my toughness. I take three. Okay. And then make me a toughness test at minus 20. Oh, What's no. with the minus 20? <laughs> it's brutal. Splatter Cat just became so much more awesome. <laughs> <laughs> 73 out of 20. Splatter Ferret. <laughs> I was about to say Splatter Ferret. Oh, Splatter Cat is really tired. Oh. <laughs> you take four more like, points of damage as pain courses through your right arm, now? shooting through you and making it go into spasms as you lurch backwards, your gun firing off uh, its bullet that you were aiming down the corridor into the ceiling. How much damage did I take from that? Uh, you take four. Uh, not resisted by toughness or armor. Oh, jeez. It is Flat, just going to be we both die and... <laughs> we, we, we both Flat, die and then Cassius and Carolinus are like, yeah, let's go back to Sky Beast. <laughs> let's make the jump. <laughs> um, I'm sorry, I woke you up. Yeah. Effectively, like, there are many things you can do. You can lie down to minimize your target area. You can get into cover and just hope one way is one way. Uh, Brandy, you could yourself just get into the airlock. A uh, Garrett screwed. <laughs> well, I thought, we, well, I thought we'd, we'd shut it, the airlock door now. Yeah, you'd have to start cranking and then slip under. It would take way too long. Yeah, I, I guess I'll go prone and try and find any cover. Okay, you it might go be prone a little you... bit because of the airlock door. It might be set yeah, there's like the wall a just a bit. enough to like hold like one arm behind cover, um, from one direction. You pick left Can... or right. Now that there's been two shots at us, can we test again to see if we can find yeah. out where it's coming from? Sure. Yeah, actually, that makes sense. You can make an awareness check. M uh, mods? Uh, flat. Um, because plus 20, minus 20. I'm going to re-roll that. I got I to gotta find this guy. Okay. That was really close as well. No! Nope. Brenda? Um, I'll just stick with the direction I've got, which is the opposite one to Garrett. What, I don't what know direction which is one Garrett? picked which way. I don't think we decided. We just said one picks one, one picks the other. I'll be okay. on the left. Okay. You're defending against the left. Garrett's randomly defending against the right. Okay. Time goes by. Nothing happens. Do you want to make a shot? 
Um, I'll try firing down my corridor. Okay. I guess it was... Was it... Was it a semi-automatic shot that I did before for suppressing fire? Uh, effectively, I just said it was a single shot because you can't actually get more than one degree of success on a 0, 1 to 0, 5. Um, and it'd be unfair okay. to say semi-auto. I mean, at this point, I'm just going to start shooting to see if I can see stuff illuminated by the laser. Uh, that's, that's my only hope. Can't see crap. Uh, Carolinas, make me a strength check. Okay. Also, make me a strength check with a minus five for... Uh... Force cat. Okay. You're still working on the airlock. Honestly, there's a little part of me that thinks that's probably what's going to keep us alive. You're way better off out there, that's for sure. Then again, got a second door after this one. Then again, there there was a giant freaking thing that shot our transport ship to bits. So maybe you're not safe out there. I don't know. True. So don't don't go to the sky beast because then they'll shoot it down. Brenda Garrett. A few seconds go by. There's no more shots. I, I, Carolinas and I'm, Cassius are I'm busy. Taking, I'm taking some last shots down the down the hallway. Okay. Can I see anything uh, at all from the last roll shots? Roll me an attack. Okay. I'm gonna do a couple of single shots down my end for more suppressing fire. Hopefully. Okay. 007. Uh, yeah. You, the shot goes down. You catch glimpses of some portholes and stuff, and then pff, it impacts against uh, uh, the wall. Mark off your shot. Mark off your shot? Well, Is this uh, the ammo. ballistics? Okay. Yeah, uh, Yeah. so make it out ballistics. Two of them because of the two guns? Uh, yeah. One and two. Fail Damn and bolts. even worse fail. Yeah, uh, both your bullets ping off um, metal down the corridor. Carolinas, the door <laughs> opens, and you and okay. Splat can get in. Uh, is Splat's internet still off? Yeah, yes. I'm trying to encourage him to try and just join the Skype call with his phone. He says the microphone is a bit dodge, but I'm like, well, it could be fine. And if it's really bad, we can just say, okay, go away until your internet comes back. So, yeah, I mean, I guess he can okay. like Skype in with a camera on his phone as well. So, like, he'll mm. he'll in the call exactly. at least. Exactly. Can I just keep shooting? Because I don't feel safe. <laughs> yeah, sure. Uh, you fire another shot. Roll for it. Because I'll be honest, right now, like my camera is so messed up. Yeah, because of all of this. <laughs> uh, Carolina, uh, you are into the airlock, and you can start closing the door behind you. Is there um, is there any added visibility for, you know, firing multiple live shots down the hall? Not massively. But are we allowed to just roll some more awareness checks after these shots or what? Not really. No. Okay. No. Uh, effectively, like you haven't really hit anything important, and there's you've had enough failed tests by now. Live shots aren't going to give you much extra. Um, okay. Uh, is anyone going to keep firing? Can't see a damn or... thing. I'm going to keep firing. I'll, I'll, I'll try one more time with okay. the suppressing fire. Uh, I'm no, just so terrible. Anything. Um, bullets and lads, bolts bouncing off uh, bits of metal. Uh, Caroline's cash has finally got the outdoor closed, and now they're trying to open the inner door. Slowly, slowly... By the way, someone mentioned should my uh, coming. someone mentioned should my void suit have counted for any defense against the the shot? Uh, no, because armor doesn't stack. And I'm pretty sure okay. your void suit is now not a void suit anymore. Yeah. Your void suit counts mm. for one point. I'm gonna give it with the firing and try looking at my my leg to oh, was it oh, was it my leg? It was my arm, wasn't it? Yeah, uh, it was your arm. You're right. Yeah, I'm gonna look if I can like see or feel whatever I got hit by. Uh, as you touch it, it stings incredibly. That the toxin or whatever it is that's causing pain throughout your entire limb, slight spasms in it, and you can see that there is like blackened veins around as something seems to have seeped into your blood system. Um, the wound itself is a puncture mark with 
when you expect it, like many different little shards that seem to have impaled your bicep and parts around the edge of your tricep as well. Um, I'm still firing at the darkness. Yep. Uh, the darkness does not respond. Um, okay. Well, once once the... Uh, that's we actually got... That means that your last pistol jams? I think? Probably. It is yeah. reliable, so it, it jams on a 98 or above, right? Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. You managed to make it jam. That's that's rather impressive. That's okay. So I got basically, you I were firing it so one. repeatedly it overheats. It's like... Doof. It's okay. Once... I just fought the second one. No problem. Once we've actually got the second door open, I immediately, like, I'm assuming we've got the second door open now. Yeah, the second door open is I'm opening right now, it. to the point you can roll through. Okay. It's not fully open, but it's enough. Right, just an OC question. How are we going to handle Cassius? Uh For the moment, Cassius is going to be NPC'd by me. You can tell him to do anything you want. He's going to be very backseat. Okay, no, that's fine. Right, once the once the door is open enough, you just see Garrett sitting there, ah, just pewing the freaking las pistol down the corridor, just shot after shot after shot after shot after shot. I and he's actually on I kind of second, I should he's on his second last pistol. Cassius to 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 crawl through. And I'm like to be, after you. What's been happening? I've heard all the all the shots going off. I've heard some of the screams. What's what's happened? What what attacked you? Do you have any ideas? We've been hit. Some sort of toxin or something. My arm and Garrett's toxin. leg. I know, it just it just hurts a lot. You can look at it if, if you like. I don't know what the hell it is. I wouldn't expect guardsmen to have it. I wouldn't expect people on, on a station like this to have it either. Hello, Splash. Back. Hey, Splash. Hey, what's up? Hey. Do, you, do you have a camera on your phone? Yep, got a camera on my phone. Are we gonna see this this camera? Uh, let me see if I can get it running. Because if not, he, he needs to fix the cameras, and I can tell that he's like, I don't want to fix the cameras. There we go. Oh it's no, a no, Perfect. no! It's not the same <laughs> aspect ratio. <laughs> yes. There we go. Well, there we go. Yes. I gotta hold it sideways. My arm's gonna that get tired. Work. This is perfect. This is perfect. It's, it's this is actually fine. Like, this doesn't sound it. too bad. I was expecting it to be potato. I, I, I will say, though, that your head actually looks somewhat like a vegetable at the moment. I'm not sure what kind of vegetable. Potato. This is going to be murder on my data caps. I can tell oh, already. Man. It's just a few minutes. Don't worry about it. Yeah, we were coming up to the end now, so we'll, we'll end maybe a few minutes earlier this week, I'm afraid. Yes. If this, and, what and happened this, to Garrett? Uh, he got he got shot really bad. He's at negative he's at negative one on crit damage, and okay. uh, Brander got hit as well in the arm, not quite as bad. And we I am firing madly at the darkness, and nothing's happening. Nothing's happening. Not a lot of choices. Yeah. Okay. You guys you guys just got into the airlock, so you're you're in the station with us instead of oh being goody. Up. I know it's like why would you come in here? You're crazy. <laughs> well, on that note, once Cassius is, has kind of crawled through. What we've managed to open of the of the second airlock um, door, I get down into a crouch and and speak through the door. I'm not coming through it yet. There's good news and there's bad news. The good news is from what I could see, and it's far away, but the sky beast appears to be intact. How intact it really is would be difficult to say but it seems that the, whatever weapon hit our transport it just sheared the front of the ship away I don't hold out any hope for the navigator or the lieutenant the bad news is as I mentioned it's far away none of us are going to get to it not without a small ship or a leap of faith I don't and think as, um... as my optical mechadendra is like looking around I append and it looks like Brander's suit is broken. So that means either Cassius or I are the only ones who can. Uh, uh, character upon question ex here. Uh, upon accepting uh, Brander's suit, it looks like it's vaguely managing to hold some pressure. These suits are, to a certain extent, self-sealing. Um, right. And it looks like it might just be holding pressure. In terms of game rules, if it goes into critical damage, it stops holding pressure immediately. 
But for oh, now, right, it okay. looks like it's just about okay. holding pressure. The rounds that hit are very small. Um, In that case, I'll append it. Brandon might be able to make the leap. It's quite far out. If How we go the... to the ship, we can't get out of the system with it. How is no. the toxin affecting us? Uh, a pain. Um, it is beginning okay. to fade a little bit now. The the damage it did um, initially is a shock to your system and the, the damage it does by effectively ruining your nerves. But um, beyond that... Oh, 001, baby. Mm. Uh, this one, however, that is a 10... Okay. Were you firing that on max? No. Okay, this was just a low-powered shot. Roll damage, please. You got him. Uh, I rolled a one. <laughs> this one, one hit one. something that was a lot closer than the shots were hitting before. Um, and you vaguely see some sort of shape, a uh, color of... Um, so a very dark, like, teal or something, or black, um, shining, um, which seems to sort of move, and then it's not there anymore. Ho, 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 guys, I hit it. I hit something. I hit something. When he says that, up. without actually looking through, because all that's, that's in there right now is my optical mechanism. I'm on the other side of the bulkhead still. It just flips to the side, and the stab light turns on. nothing there except for uh what is effectively um a human chained to the ceiling um spread eagle giant iron bolts which upon closer inspection seems to be sheared rivets have been drilled through the ankles and the wrists the flesh has been entirely removed from the face, exposing the teeth and the nose cavity. The eyes have been plucked out and have been set into the hands. Uh, the feet themselves have been um, scraped away until they're into okay. bone points. And one of the legs has been turned almost 90 degrees at the, uh, the, um, the knee and pushed through the hamstring of the other one, as if making some sort of weird sign or symbol. The flesh from the face Emperor's mercy. Uh, has been uh, draped over and under its chin like it's still attached there and it seems to be made into some sort of bib. And the flesh that's been scraped away from the feet has been jammed in the mouth like the person is eating. Uh, I need you all to make mundane fear tests at a plus 10. Uh, Carolus, you've already made one, so it will be a plus 20 for you. Uh, Cassius is still in the airlock and cannot see this. <laughs> when you say fear test, oh, it's just willpower came through. test, right? Willpower. Yeah. Oh, Cassius came through. Willpower plus Cassius 10. Okay, uh, yeah, I need to make a willpower check at plus 10. Uh, plus 20, Cassius. Let me see if I can minimize Skype and log into roll 20 on my phone. Okay. <laughs> oh my god, I, that's right. If you just we say can roll yeah. for you. <laughs> I can, I can roll for you. I know your willpower is what, yeah. like 60? It's 50. You can see, 50. You're the GM. You can just look up everyone's sheets, right? Uh, 50, 70, I rolled an 84. Um, uh, I'll fade it. Fade it. Nice. Uh, yes, you got 66, you need a 70, you pass. Um, I rolled a 39 versus 50. 39 versus 50, you're fine. Garrett, you fail by 3 degrees. Branda, <laughs> you fail by 4 degrees. Time to get up my fear table. I might, I might fate that, because I've got all my fate left still. This you is not a good it. day for the team. Do you think this is a good time to spend your fate? I'm, I'm going to fate it. Okay, feel free to reroll. I need to not be scared right now. Got enough trouble on my plate. Didn't Still help. scared. 64, 58. And of course, Skype messes up. There we go. Um, fear checks. Blah, 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 blah. Right, so um, I would like Branda. You're still four degrees out. Um, Garrett's three degrees out. Both of you, can you roll me a d100, and uh, can you add thirty and forty respectively? So Branda, that's forty. Garrett's thirty. Am I doing plus forty? Yep. One hundred. 
75. Okay, 75. You're frozen with terror. You can make no actions until you recover yourself. And after snapping out, you're tested at minus 10 for the rest of the encounter. 100. Could have been worse. Could have been 101. Panic grips. You must flee the source of fear, if able, as fast as you can. And if prevented from doing so, can only take half actions at the minus 20 or test. Once away from the danger, you must successfully snap out of it. You roll Shit. under the uh, bulkhead into the airlock. That is as far as you can get away from it. So Brenda. essentially, I can't, I yeah. can't move. <laughs> yeah. So effectively, you roll into the airlock, and you have to roll to break, snap out of it. Brenda, you're just staring at it, a gulp, and you just can't take your eyes off it. All they hear across the the micro beat is, oh, fascinating. <laughs> <laughs> the leg bones connected to the mouth bone. <laughs> Eye bones connected to the palm bone. Uh. But as, as Garrett rolls through, I'm like, in the name of your... You've forgotten the face of your father. Then I look back through. Seemingly... Brandon, Cassius, you alright? Yeah, I'm alright. I swing my... I, I... Stab like the other direction of the T-junction. Um, nothing seemingly there. There is uh, a cup rolling around the floor gently. The handle is missing, as if someone had shot it off recently as bits of china are splattered around behind it. I look at Brander and I say, grenades? I'm, I'm, just, I'm just sort of silently mouthing nothing in particular while staring at the at the, the body. Garrett Brand. Uh, I, I look at Carolina. I look at Carolina. Yeah, I, I said, I "What's our plan them. now?" As I was just saying, someone could try and leap to the Sky Beast. It would be a very dangerous maneuver. And at best, all I could really promise is that we could maneuver the Sky Beast above the station. The weapon is on the bottom. It would be out of firing range, but that would be all we could do. And then begin broadcasting. See if we can contact the Inquisitor. You don't have an interrogator. Call for aid. Or do we not? Uh, I thought you said we did. The, uh, there would have been one aboard the, the, the ship um, as part of the crew because there were two crew and there's a navigator so the other one would have been the, the afterpath um, okay. sadly well, that's fine and seemingly uh, I would like Carolinus Brander both of you have some background here. You can make intelligence checks at plus 10. Cassius, you can make an intelligence check. Garrett, you can make an intelligence check as well. Okay, you gotta roll it for me. I'm at 25 okay. for intelligence. 81, 52, I failed. Zero six, Cassius. Yay, Fail. I had my moments. Uh, so, everyone fails for Cassius. Cassius. You guys let the dumb guy win. I'm, you... I'm currently trying to comfort Garrett as he huddles in the corner. You get the feeling that you looked at the turret out one of the windows briefly before the firing, and it didn't seem to be pointing in your direction. And you, you would imagine a turret like that turns pretty slowly. Um, you're not sure it came from that Lance turret. I mentioned this to Carolinas. What do you... S I seem confused by the idea. There are only two possibilities if what you say is accurate and the Lance turret at the bottom of the station was not the one to fire upon us. That the station is armed with another weapon that we failed to note or something else entirely fired on us. I, I simply Maybe mean to insinuate ship. that perhaps it was the ship that we lost. Perhaps it's got some kind of Stealth technology that is firing at the station with, or through.
that's the case, I fear we may be far more outgunned than it already seems, adding even more insult to injury here. Brando, what do you know of this station? Would you be able to make use of its weaponry? I don't think we've done any of our get out of fear rolls yet. So I don't know if uh, we can respond to you. It's um, effectively like narrative time now. Uh, you were okay. all out of um, snap out. It takes about 30 oh, seconds to snap okay. out. So, Carolinas, can your Auspex scan for heat signatures? Whatever it is, it's down the hallway. Yes. It may be invisible like everything else. So having having checked the maps and, and also being aware generally of this sort of thing, what I know about the weaponry on the station. Uh, yeah, you could probably give it a go operating it. Uh, you don't actually have the operate Voidcraft. If someone had operate Voidcraft, they could. Um, you could... I would let you default on it to an extent because of your background, but uh, you wouldn't be particularly uh, adept at it. Um, you could certainly point out what the things are. I, I would know that there weren't any other weapons on the station that could have done the damage. Yeah, three macro uh, weapons and a lance. I rolled 23 versus 52 on a tech use test for my all specs. Okay. Um, I'm scanning for things that we wouldn't be able to see, hear, smell with our natural senses. Uh, immediate I mean, immediate vicinity it. that it can reach. Your all specs reports... Nothing out of the ordinary beyond the fact that there is uh, uh, power fluctuations throughout the power grid. Very, very minor in the power grid. It looks like the entire power grid for the uh, station, apart from very basic functions, is actually off right now. Um, there are certain weird fluctuations coming from the location that I pointed out before, which is just below the turret. Um, but they are much more minimal. Uh, they seem to be disrupting a lot of things. Um, and you seem to be getting odd like readings from all systems around there as if they're flicking off and on or being suppressed um, beyond that most of the systems just appear currently to be offline um, not damaged in any way that you can tell uh, atmosphere is currently very slowly decompressing a little bit in this area not by much uh, probably plenty of hours before it even gets to a stage where it will be noticeable on your physiology um, or put that with Garrett's physiology um other than that, seems to be somewhat abandoned. Okay. There is an unusual amount of iron in the air. I relay this information. Is that taken into account that the Auspex can penetrate walls up to 50 centimeters thick for 50 meters? Uh, yes. This, this covers a good deal of the uh, of the current location you're in, um, including you know around corners, etc. I relay that information to the others. Looking back to to Garrett, who's basically now stood in the the um, oh, I ain't standing. Of the... My leg is oh. fucked. Okay. Oh, you can stand. Oh. There's still pain, but you can stand. You just took a little fatigue. You know, that's about it. Oh, okay. Critical damage, just a little fatigue. We're good, right? Just a little sleepy sleep. Just a little sleepy sleep. Nighty night time, Garrett. Nighty night time. <laughs> Okay, well, looking at it again and seeing, you know, I obviously heard him just like screaming out in pain when he got shot over the microbead, I'm assuming. Was your microbead open or, or was that silent effectively? Um, some of it was silent, but some of it was when you were like coming through the airlock, so you probably heard a lot of it. Okay, okay. Um, so knowing that you were one of the ones who was screaming, and I imagine I, I can see you favoring your other leg and... Um, I'm just going to say that I can tell that you're wounded, and yes. I'm going to approach. And as I'm approaching, the optical mechadendrite just recoils and then just whoop, into the back, and then out comes the clickety clack, you know, scalpel and an injector, medical okay, mechadendrite. Taking a haircut while you're at it, little trim trim. <laughs> just take the scalp off. Yeah, <laughs> I could. Uh, so yeah, feel free to make a, a medical roll. Uh, do you want to do the same for Brando as well? Well, first I need to check on what level of damage is... Critical. It's, uh, it's in critical, so that means minus 30. Uh, unless I've already picked up. Let me just double check. No, it's the next thing and what I'm saving it for. Okay. Yeah. 
Well, that is unfortunate. It's going to be a little bit more difficult. Um, well, it's going to be a minus 30, but I'll try. Once they get into critical, it gets significantly harder to Can heal. you use fate to autopass? No. Uh, I can. And he is in critical. Yeah, okay. I'll use fate to autopass this one. So Intelligence is fast. Um, That's the spirit. I automatically pass, but I only pass by my um, the degrees of success of my intelligence bonus, which is four. Okay, you also get so four I plus the degree of success, so that's eight. Uh, Garrett, you get eight health back. Does the critical go away? Uh, yes. So you're now basically seven it heals wounds. critical damage yeah. first. Yeah. Seven wounds? Why would it be seven? One for the critical and then the seven overflow. Oh, you mean you heal seven? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you heal eight, but one of them is critical damage. Um, do you want to do the same for Branda? Uh, yes. Uh, well, I assume that he's through the airlock, so I'm going to make sure that... that uh, Garrett is okay first, and I usher him out of the airlock. I'm a little bit nervous about the the, the one person without a uh, void suit at all being in the airlock. Call me old fashioned, but you know, violent decompression is not good to watch. It's Except still decompressing. It it's just not as violent anymore. <laughs> so I'm back in the I'm back in the T intersection, peeking down the hallway that doesn't have broken cup handles in it. Uh, is there anything that we can see over here? Uh, apart from the body stapled to the roof, um, seemingly nothing you can see. Um, Caroline has placed a flashlight across it so you can see within 40 feet. Yeah. Wow. I can't do that while I'm no. medicking, but yeah, I'll do that in a no. bit. So I um, go over to Brando. How wounded are you, Brando? How much damage have you taken? Um, I've taken seven. And what's your toughness bonus? Four, which Four. means eight, so it's only lightly wounded. Okay, that's not too bad then. I can heal you with my bonus rather than um, losing to that, but we'll see. Uh, yeah. 10, 62. Yeah. Pretty good. That is six degrees of success. Uh, yeah. yeah, so six degrees plus you heal 10 wounds. I'm assuming that's plenty for you. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Um,. And you're while, I, while I'm doing that, I'm also... Can I analyze them for this poison? Can I take a sample? Because you said they had like black throbbing veins. Would I be able to take a sample of that? Yeah, you could you could. Because I, yeah, sure. I can potentially craft something using a sample of that poison. If I get it. So I'm going to... Uh, I'll draw... Um, well, to be honest, I'd like to take a bit of the flesh around the wound. I'll take that from Garrett. Um, Brand is fine. <laughs> <laughs> Just in the process. Sample, unless you wound him, but you could take yeah. a small bit. Um, yeah, a small bit, like a, like a bit of the flesh. Okay. Um, and I draw the blood from around the wound, and I do that for for Brander as well. And once we get a moment, I'd like to actually have Carolina stop okay. and try to to run. Uh, uh, it'll be a very rudimentary. Sure, you don't want to take a moment idea. right now in your kind of no, 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 no. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Once okay. we get a moment. Like he's he's getting it now because it's best to take it when it's fresh. And you're doing the healing right now, anyway. Uh, so yeah, you, you've yeah. got now two samples of unknown black toxin blood. Uh, the thing is, it's spent quite a while, so a lot of it's got into the system. So it'll be very weak. Okay. Uh, in general, the the blackness has kind of spread out and is more diffuse. It's more of a grey around the wound now, but you can still have um, some of it. Um, and you know what? You know what? Carolinus is thinking this whole time. Mmm, toxin blood. I wonder if the book likes toxin blood. <laughs> Can I sign this science? Uh, it's a why, 50 check. Why do you always assume the worst? Sure, I'm trying I will to help sign you. for you. Jerk. I uh, never passed. I, I, rolled, I rolled an 87. Okay, See, my science is cursed. I never make my science for some reason. At least you haven't it's... opened the warp upon us yet. Yeah, yeah. Yet. That's true. I roll really well in combat, so I guess it makes up for it. This is, All right. This is I'm going to heave a huge sigh of relief now that my leg's not, not quite as horribly painful as it used to be. I'm just going to ask... What's the plan, boys? Are we going to stand here? And that... No, we're not. We're going to move. ...is where we're going to end for tonight.
Um, it seems Yay. to be a, a logical point as ever. Uh, bear in mind, by the way, that we have a special episode uh, coming next week because it's our Halloween episode. Um, <laughs> so this timeline will continue in two weeks' time. So in two weeks' time, we'll find out the continuation. However, next week we're going to have a Darkest Timeline episode. What if the team never joined up with the Inquisition under the Emperor's Light? What if the team were their evil doppelgangers? <laughs> you say what if as if our evil twins aren't out there somewhere. <laughs> Don't worry, folks. There's nothing to fear. It's going to be a perfectly normal show. Perfectly normal cast. None of us are going to be spooky at all. To be fair, the only difference between the darkest timeline and this one, for me and Cassius, is time. <laughs> this is true. This is true. It's going to be a pretty good. It's going to be a pretty good preview of what like a month from now or two months from now will be for these two idiots. <laughs> Papa Nurgle's blessings—they're coming. You could try to run, but. Can, can we get faster we get than your fan, feet? Can we get some fan art of Cassius sitting on uh, Papa Nurgle dressed up as Santa Claus, just asking for things for Christmas? Daddy, My little buddy Nurgling's just you all over me. Powers. <laughs> oh, kitty! No, I didn't mean to give you psychic powers. <laughs> also, <laughs> give all of give all of my enemies space aids. Thank you, Papa Nurgle. Amen. Oh. <laughs> There will be blood. For the rest of the stream. Um, there will be slaughter. Blood will flow. <laughs> oh dear. Oh dear, oh dear. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, that's the end of tonight's show. Um, bear in mind that uh, these are the uh, the lovely Patreons down here who supported at the Grand Inquisitor or uh, Lord Inquisitor tiers. So thank you very much to them for being uh, massive stars and uh, helping us out. Um, next week, like Support I say... Noted, your deaths will be swift and painless. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, so, yeah, um, if uh, you want to go check out uh, our lovely Halloween episode next week, it'll be the same time as usual. Uh, we'll be back on Space Station Zebra uh, two weeks' time. Of course, that'll be the same time as always. We'll also be beginning, hopefully, uh, if our Patreon holds out, uh, mid-next uh, month. I think we're hoping for the 16th. Uh, we'll let you know nearer the time uh, to do D&D. Um, and that will be Wednesdays at 9 p.m. BST, 1 p.m. PDT. So start marking it down in your diaries. Uh, Essentially, it's the exact same show that used to be on yeah. Wednesday. But now it's D&D. &D. And I don't have to GM it. Well, you, you, you can do Mirror Shades D&D. &D. It's going to be, like, somewhere in there, but I got a feeling that E.E.'s Bard is going to try and jerk things swiftly in the uh, pink mohawk direction. Yeah, but see, as the GM, me, you can slap him down. Make it go in the pink mohawk direction. Never. Exactly, see? I, I the sneakiest. <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> I, I, I think you guys are going to enjoy E.E. E. when he gets to play his character <laughs> instead of being the GM. Wait, they, what, they don't enjoy me already? No, they don't well. enjoy you. They hate you. You're so mean to us and everything. You, you shot us like in the leg with poison. poison yeah, what the hell? Fucking critical damage You're in an shot. unwinnable situation. It's not unwinnable. We're don't gonna die. Yet. This is why we got dead. kicked out of the Navy. Trapped in orbit of a dead world with no way of escaping. No way of contacting anyone outside. The Sky Beast is in the distance, floating through whoa, space. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Possibly damaged. And this there's something Papa trying to kill us. And has done a good job of that it's already. It's got like a lance battery and macro cannons. It's fine. What to shoot the Sky Beast with? Yeah. <laughs> is there, well, we're going to die. Might as well have some fun shooting. <laughs> ba boom, ba boom, ba boom. So Yay, has, macro cannons were Has dead. chat figured out what it is that's on the station that's kicking our ass? I oh, bet chat, fi have. chat figured it out before they even went to the station. I saw people getting it right already. <laughs> I had I, a feeling. I had a sneaking go. suspicion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But none of you have many forbidden laws or anything. And the problem nope. is, um, the only person who can really get Forbidden Laws is Carolinas, because Cassius doesn't have intelligence. We were moaning over this uh, earlier. We're like, wait, you don't have intelligence? It makes so much sense for your character. No. Aww. My ability to descend into chaos has actually been severely hampered by my stupidity. You're just not if, intelligent. If you, to a chaos. surprising extent. 
I you don't have to be think pretty it, smart to go to chaos. It's weird. I don't think it really would make sense, but maybe we can manage it somehow because Garrett has intelligence. <laughs> maybe we can do something. I know it's like, what the fuck? You come from this feudal world. You're always asking, how does this wheel turn? What do you mean you flush the toilet? And it's like, yeah, I've got the intelligence stat. We can make it work. Okay, yeah, you like, you should totally get all the Forbidden Lord Xenos so you know how to kill them. Yes, not because, not because I worship the Dark Lord, not, no, 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 nothing like that, no. Or, you know, you could learn sorcery as well. You should ask Cassius for tips. It'd be cool. <laughs> don't ask me. I don't know what you're talking about. Cassius <laughs> is still on the fence about whether he wants a metal wang. That shit is heresy. That shit is heresy. Yeah, just like those books with tongues. Yeah, if you're looking for a heretic here, it's Carolinus. I've done nothing wrong. I turned the book into the proper authorities. You know nothing, Jon Snow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Let's step on top of right toes today. Yay, lawsuits! What? I don't know what you mean by lawsuits. I don't wear suits. I hate goblins. <laughs> <laughs> it's not even it's not even D and D time yet, and he's already just clamoring for it. I want to. I want to. <laughs> eyes, eyes, bad, James bad. <laughs> Get ready for this. This is what it's been like oh, for yeah. like two weeks since we decided on this. Non-stop. Bad extraordinary. Oh, wait, wait, like at your a, service. I need like a card, business card. I'm waiting for a dark heresy character with that voice. Wondering what on earth it could be. <laughs> Gretchen. Like you gotta make yeah. it more chavy though if it's gonna be a Gretchen. It's gotta be more. What? I got all the bling. You can see my chavs here. There you go. Now you got it. I just got all the You're best just ready teeth. To... You're ready to be fired out of a grot cannon. Whee! <laughs> oh <my> God. <laughs> <laughs> That's really hard to do. Uh, but yeah. Anyway. Uh, so we're gonna go record an after show in a minute. Uh, Probably without a splat. I don't want to ruin your data cap. Um, which means I'll need to... I want to be a part of it, but Comcast has decided they hate our show. You guys should you go... Can, go what you can do is... Get you on can, Yelp and burn them to the ground. Do it for you me. Can, you can type in Skype, and that won't fuck up your data cap. We'll, we'll, we'll say all nice things about you. Oh, I'm uh, sure. We'll, we'll make sure that your character gets... So you know, that Cassius guy now is not here. He's a massive, like, uh, cockwomble, isn't he? <laughs> What's a cockwomble? He is. he is. It is the best insult ever. Because it's so, like, demean. Oh. Anyway, uh, so yeah, um, until next week. Uh, Avak, what are you doing? Where can we find you? Well, you can find me on YouTube, Twitch, and Twitter. Twitter down below, I think. The camera's in the right place, otherwise I'm pointing this back at Cat. On Twitch and YouTube, it's just youtube.com slash avac or Twitch. I think it's dot TV slash avac. I think it's twitch.tv. Um, and at the moment, I am playing a second season of Stardew Valley with the 1.1 patch. Really, really fun. It is super fun to get, get back to it. it. I wasn't sure that I would be that fun playing through it again. But no, I'm having loads of fun now. I know what I'm doing. Um, I may be playing some Civ Six. I am also playing through the end of Rogue Wizards, Halcyon Six, and a Zombie Night Terror, as well as an ongoing Rimworld game, which is going very, very well. Okay. Um, Bentham, Branda, where can we find you? And what are you doing? All right, on YouTube, I am Mangled Port Gaming. On Twitter, I'm uh, at Bentham Plays. Currently, I'm playing Factorio and Rodina, as I always am and always will be. Um, and uh, continue, uh, just constant killing of aliens. It never seems to stop. I've just spent an hour in towns, just in, like Factorio towns, just burning fighter bases nonstop. It was fun. They've been annoying me for a long time. And also, I'm trying to get some really, really old game to work, but getting old games to work on Windows 10 and also be recorded by OBS is a nightmare. Which Doesn't old know. game? It's a secret. You I know, see? that's why I'm asking if you, you ever I, see. It, straight up. I, I thought we were I, friends. I'm hoping I'll intimidate you enough that you'll just immediately squeal. 
But I can't promise it because there's absolutely no guarantee it'll ever work. But if you promise it, then you'll have more motivation to make it work. Go on, I'm not prepared us, for the that sort of commitment. Never. <laughs> oh, Never tell. On, please. Share your secrets. Wasn't expecting the Spanish Inquisition. Why well, is not Spanish? <laughs> nobody, nobody did the thing. Why did nobody do the thing? Because we're not sharing our secrets. Because I'm a goblin. <laughs> you can stood. Oh, whatever. I'm not telling you. Go away. <laughs> Okay, uh, Splat, Cash, is where can people find you and what you're doing? Uh, YouTube.com <laughs> slash Splattercat Gaming, Twitch TV slash Splattercat Gaming. Uh, right now, just treading water for a little bit, playing some Shadow Warrior 2, which is pretty hilarious. Good little game. Uh, Sunless Seas of Mariner is out, which I'm having a lot of fun with. I've been waiting for that one for a long time. And then on top of that, I've been doing a short playthrough of Skybreak, which was like an indie game that caught me a little bit as I surprised. And then on the side, I've got some other stuff going on, but Finishing up Masquerada hopefully soon, um, but looking forward to November. There's a lot of stuff going on in November that I'm really excited about, so it should be a fun month. Sweet. Shen, People in chat are saying Gollum and Sauron. <laughs> that would be the, uh, the best hi, team up. Hi, my name is Shen. You can find me on YouTube.com slash Shenner2 and on Twitch.tv slash Shenner. I've been playing games on Twitch for, what, three years now? Every day of the fucking week. Eight hours a day. Lately, I've been doing like 10 hours and 12 hours a day because I've been playing a lot of multiplayer Civ 6 with the No Quitters group. It's a lot of fun. Uh, if you guys are interested in Civ 6, definitely come check it out. We're pointing out all the fun flaws in the game, like how you can chop yourself to victory, chop into a wonder, chop into 15 cities by turn 25. Just, it's ridiculous. Uh, playing the new... Oh, oh, let's play some multiplayer, EE. I'll fucking crush you. Uh, playing the new patch for Stellaris. It's absolutely fantastic. I love all the ship rolls oh, in, this, in this now. I, oh, I, it's, it's so really good. I've been about setting up it's, it's like, a new one. It's like, what's, what's, what, what's the early game like? All Corvettes with high evasion, and if you, if you run into someone with missiles, then you put some point defense on your ships. Whatever, you're done. You don't do that anymore because your ships have rolls. The small ships are now uh, aggressive ships. They can't even fit defensive modules. The medium-sized ships are defensive ships, and they can fit torpedoes. No, that, and then they can fit uh, a point defense. But the small ships can fit torpedoes. It's it's like they have but very select torpedoes rolls now. are no longer... Yeah, you should just get torpedoes and ignore every other weapon. Because if you get torpedoes, they suck at hitting anything with evasion. Like, incredibly sucky. Which makes sense. Yeah. Useful for shooting down like big things, but useless for corvettes. Um, so you can make corvettes to attack big things or small things. It's quite good so far. Yeah. yeah. If, if you've ever if you ever played Eve Online, they've introduced tracking to all the weapons in the game now. So the weapons oh, no God. longer no longer have just a, a set percent chance to hit or miss. Now they have tracking, and that's based on your speed in battle. And you can improve your speed in battle by putting so the good. by putting the power system of your ship over 100%. If you power your ship like 120%, you get like a 20% Ooh. boost to your speed in combat. And you can See, also you can also fit a module called an afterburner which increases your speed in combat. Just stuff like that. The the the, the reason why my um Stellaris campaign basically became dead in the water unfortunately is it had existed from the moment Stellaris came out. And then the big changes, uh, specifically the one that doubled engagement range and made the whole long-range game very important, because all of my fleets, all of my everything I'd done with the with the campaign, because it was a it was a slow campaign, you know, so it had gone across several patches, but all of a sudden the entire game, the entire naval combat mechanics changed, and nothing I had was built for it, and so the AI just came along and just literally. Rothel stomped my entire armada, and I was like, "Yeah, well, that was fun." Pool balls. That was. It's, that was it's, about it's really hard to oh, play any so hard. any uh, paradox game through a patch because yeah. they change so much in the patch, especially I mean, it's when great it's a, that they do it. But, oh uh, yeah, yeah. The, the last patch wasn't too bad. This patch, it's not even compatible. Yeah. It, uh, it one of the big differences is late game. You always had one specific ship type you go for. Late game is battleship, 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 battleship. And what do you put on it? Do you put small weapons on it? No, you put six fucking tachyons on it. Every battleship has six tachyons. You shoot shit at 120 kilometers away yeah. or whatever, and you just nuke everything. Well, now your battleships can only fit one tachyon. That's it. So they have to fit other shit. 
which means your fleets are never going to be super duper like overpowered. You're going to have that nice one weapon, but that's it. I yeah. like that. You have to basically like spread your weapons around, which makes sense considering you need the tracking, etc. Um, as for myself, uh, as in Trillisium, you can catch me at uh, twitch.tv forward slash Trillisium, youtube.com forward slash Trillisium, and uh, twitter.com forward slash Trillisium. And once you catch him, make sure you hold him over a fiery pit. No, oh, you're not going to catch me. I've got this ring. Fuck it, who's the ring? Um, <laughs> I've currently got a series of, like, Stellaris, where I'm playing some really cute geckos. And these, these two little cute geckos are, like, taking over the world because they're collectives. And then and there's stuff like that. Um, I've also got one where I'm playing in Mexico, and I'm taking over the world in Hearts of Iron. And, and I'm nuking everything. And I'm currently stuck in a war in Europe, which is fun. I just recorded some more of that. Um, it's really it for actually get to an interesting point where I'm having some troubles. Um... And then I've also got, uh, I'm, I'm finishing a Civ uh, 6 series as uh, Victoria, which is which is all kinds of funs, because people give me like 750 gold for one sugar, because it's cocaine. Um, hey, if, if, I can, if I can sell a pig to Rome, and they give me the city, Rome, which allows me to win the domination victory of the game, yeah. I've asked for that. Yeah. I've never got that. They seem to always like flat out refuse me. The best one I've got though is if you're at peace, if you're at war with someone and they really want to give up, you can offer them flat peace. They will not accept. You can offer them a flat peace for billion gold, three of your cities and your luxes. Yes, they will take that and they'll be grateful. You can't offer them a flat peace. They will flat out refuse. It's like, what? Mm -hmm. What? Mm -hmm. It's like literally mm -hmm. better for you in every way. Hey, E.E., -E, try Scythia. You'll love it. Oh, you'll love it. Okay. There's some they're, massive they're units, going on there. There are units. When you produce you one, you... let Splattercat go. Oh, yeah. That's true. Go okay. ahead. I will. But, uh, yeah, but anyway, uh, thank you very much for watching. Go check out the uh, Patreon. Um, go check out the subreddit, because it would be interesting to get some, like, discussion going on there. We've also, uh, I've put up two of the uh, supplements that are homebrew first edition uh, conversions for you to have a look at up there if you want. They are still beta-ish, so there might be tweaks. Um, and it'll be good to get chat going on over there about what the, uh, like, politics and stuff you're thinking on is going on in-game. Uh, we're also hopefully starting the D&D &D next month, so looking forward to that if we get the Patreon to the correct goal. <laughs> um, lots of certain stuff going on, and really kind of, I think, for I speak for everyone, when we're, like, blown away by the sport we've got so far and so quickly, and thank mm -hmm. you so much. The Olchenvaur. Anyways, um... We'll catch you next week at the same time, where we'll be doing a Halloween special, and that should be all kinds of funs to watch. Yes, it will be all kinds of funs. Um, basically, the darkest timeline, you're going to see a lot of stuff flip the other way around, and it's going to be lots of fun. Um, but until then, just murder roll for it. Take care, everybody. Hope.